Hello, everyone, and peace of the Lord to all of you. Uh, please invite your friends and share the link with everybody you know, so we can have more people joining us very soon. Today, our topic, it's a question we ask. What make Muslims believe that Muhammad is a prophet? And to help me with this topic, I searched in the internet and I found an article made by Muslims. Muhammad, the final prophet of God. P B U H. You notice always Muslims cannot say the name of Muhammad without adding letters after his name. For they are afraid to mention his name without adding things next to it. Now they say that this is an act of respect. But I mean, what respect? You just called him a prophet. P B U H. The Muslim they say this is B and plus in upon him. The fact this is a lie. In Arabic it says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which means as Mimi uh, Burka in his debate said that Allah he pray for Muhammad. He don't pray to Muhammad. I'm not sure if you remember. Uh, what uh, Mimi Hijab he said in his uh, debate with uh, uh, with one of our brothers. So Allah he pray for uh, he don't pray to, and this is what it's meant by adding those letters usually. Now here you go down you will see. Muhammad the final prophet of Islam is widely considered one of the most influent, uh, influential men in history. Today. Nearly one fourth of the world population follow the message he believed. Now, the numbers the Muslims they give, and even uh, media, it's very funny and very stupid. It's very far away from, from any uh, truth. And you know, when the Muslims they calculate, or even many, many uh, stupid media, they calculate for you how many Muslims there is in the earth. As an example, they calculate Nigeria as Muslim country when it's like 50, 50 almost. And uh, actually, more than 50 are Christians. Uh, they calculate uh, all Sudan, it used to be called as a Muslim country, but Sudan now became south and north of Sudan. And south is a Christian, full Christian, 100% uh, Christian. Uh, you know, they calculate uh, countries as all of them, they are Muslims, but in fact, some countries, they have even zero Muslims. As an example, uh, uh, countries belong to the Soviet Union, who they are used to be Muslims but now even Islam is forbidden from those countries so the numbers they speak of it's absolutely false even in Middle Eastern countries like as an example even when they speak about Muslims in USA they consider me as a Muslim because I'm a Middle Eastern so what they do you know they just calculate how many people come in from uh, Iran how many people come in from Iraq how many people come in from Syria uh, Lebanon uh, 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 Jordan, uh, Egypt, uh, etc. And then they say, okay, we have maybe a million of those people coming from two million. So to all of them, they are Muslims. In fact, the majority are Christians. Anyway, the numbers are very funny. It's just to, to, uh, to make you more interested of how influential he is. Uh, he was a Caesar and a Pope in one. But he was Pope without popes Pret what pretension caesar without legions of caesar without standing army mm -hmm. without bodyguards mm -hmm. without a palace mm -hmm. without fixed revenue uh -huh. in if every any man had the fight to say the right to say that he ruled the right driven it was Muhammad so look at here at this lie I mean I can show you reference how Muhammad was raping women and they have people in his tent guarding him Muhammad don't have guards Muhammad don't have a salary so what the Quran is saying that the fifth of every attack to the Prophet what about the Quran says the best of the booty to the Prophet what about the Quran speaking about the Muslims fighting over the booty accusing the Prophet that he took an underwear Muhammad, he have no palace. Yeah, because in Saudi Arabia at that time, they are Bedouin. They have no palaces. They have, you know, tiny houses made from mud. 
not because he don't like to have one but he have 13 houses and he have 13 wives according to you Muslims now 13 houses put them together they make a palace you know? now Muhammad he is uh, he was a Caesar but he have no lineage Muhammad so why the Muslim they say to us that Muhammad was from the high noble family of Quraysh the article here saying the opposite I mean Muhammad a poor guy uh, even the Muslim they spread rumors that Muhammad when he die before he die he borrow money from a Jew and he gave even the Jew his weapon in like a, what they call it like I don't know what they call it in English like you know you give something valuable for you they give you money so like in case you did not return the money they take it so Muhammad he gave his weapon to the Jew but there's no Jews he killed them all Muhammad borrowing money from the Jew where the Jew Muhammad killed all the Jews he borrowed money from them after he killed them he brought a guy from the grave he says hey I want to borrow your money he took their money true story so as you see here the Muslim they tried to present Muhammad as an amazing amazing a beautiful man in fact he was a rapist he was a criminal he was a liar he was a cheater he's a child molester he is everything in the book of a scam but in this article Muhammad is something really special Muhammad was born in 570 CE well, by the way nobody knows if even Muhammad is born or even exist to make it simple for you I believe there's somebody he started this madness but who is he we do not know what we know is what is written by Muslim books a Muslim books written hundred of years after the guy who they call him Muhammad so based in what they have yes there is a guy his name is Muhammad but originally his name was Qatham but is there really Qatham and Muhammad really exist we do not know but based in their books this is the guy they are talking about that he is a prophet but if you go and study reading search in history you don't find really details about this man there's nothing except what Muslim books says You will find that this article, speaking of things, and yet they did not tell us where they got their things from. Uh, like previous prophets, Muhammad's message was rejected by many of his people. They insisted on maintaining the religious and social custom of their ancestors. The fact this is a big fat lie because Muhammad he is the one who insisted to maintain the religious social custom of ancestor he do exactly the same they used to go around the Kaaba he go around the Kaaba they kiss the black stone he kissed the black stone they do a Safa and Marwa he did the Safa and Marwa do you notice how they they do fool you or try to fool you well, what is the difference between the customs of the Arab before Islam and the custom of the Arab after Islam? Even during the time of Muhammad, the Arab still was going around the Kaaba totally naked as part of their custom as people who worship vagina, which is the black stone. If we go in the Hadith, according to Muslim, The forbidden of doing tawaf, which the Muslims do today, tawaf, which means going around the Kaaba, was at the last year of Muhammad's life. At the last year.
as you see here in Sahih Muslim. And if you have my book, Six and the Law, you will see that Muhammad, the reason for him to forbid the people going around the Kaaba naked again, because he saw a woman and she have a beautiful breast and beautiful private part. And just trying to be, you know, polite, not to say the word as it is, it is in the, as it is in the Arabic reference. You will see there that after Muhammad, he saw this woman singing around the Kaaba, and she is totally naked. He wanted her to be in his bed, and because by his nature he is a like he's a guy who like to own, and nobody own what he own, and nobody can see what he see. So he don't want to see this woman to be seen naked again. So he forbid people from going around the Kaaba naked. Now, if you ask the Muslims, why you are going around the Kaaba? What this is, you know, going in circle around the Kaaba? As you see, this is a pagan practice. As long as those people are pagan, and Muhammad did exactly what the pagan does around the house. And actually, the Muslim they're still naked, by the way, until now. All what they do, they put a sheet over their body, but they are still totally naked. Totally naked. Nobody wear underwear, no clothes. It's just a sheet, and this is the way, the right way to perform. Now, for sure, you can go around the Kaaba waiting, wearing your clothes, but if you want to do it, if you want to do Hajj, or if you want to do what it's called uh, Umrah, which is something supposedly you do once in your lifetime at least, then you have to wear the white sheet, which is you are totally naked in a certain way, and even you have to wear a certain kind of sandals made, it, made from uh, one piece. Supposedly, and why one piece? Uh, the Muslim they have their own logic, but the fact it is because the Arab they believe that this should be everything the Muslims they have is nothing but inheritance of the pagan Arab before them, and they are pagan, nothing more, nothing less. You know, if we ask the, uh, the, the Muslim today, your prophet is not a pagan prophet, but he kissed a black stone. Why he kissed a black stone? The Muslim they say to us he kissed the black stone because the stone is holy. We say why he why the stone is holy. They say that because the prophet he kissed it. I mean, obviously, very smart and very good answer. They have no answer, obviously. They are just trying to defend, but they don't know what they are talking about. The more we uh, the more we see uh, you know Muslims speaking about Islam, the more we notice that Muslims they try to present Islam to us in like a, like a Disneyland movie, uh, like something uh, you know uh, you know they. They try to make it look beautiful, something like a fantasy. It's like a dream. I never saw an article that says how Muhammad he got his wife Sophia as an example to be his wife. Where he killed her father, her brother, her son. Some they say they didn't have a son, but and some according to the Muslim books it says that she was a bride. But maybe previously she was married, but she is still young. And he killed her husband and she is newly married and he took her and he raped her in a tent before even they leave town the town which they invade so the Muslims articles uh, Is far away from reality. 
it's kind of deception as always Muslims they do when they try to present Islam to us and by the way my Skype is open if there is any Muslim he want to prove me wrong that all of those are nothing but lies a French historian Alfonso de Lamartine has stated if a greatness of purpose smallness of means astonishing and astonishing result are the three criteria of a human genius who could dare to compare any great man in modern history with Muhammad now by the way you know when Muslim they quote for you something you better check it out because most likely 99% it's a lie as an example they fabricate tons of stories about people converting to Islam or people saying great things about Muhammad as an example George Bernard Shaw he said that if the Prophet was exist today he can solve all the problems in of the world while he is driving his coffee in the morning and then we look for Ber George Bernard Shaw where he said that we could not find the book it was an article written by Muslims in Singapore many many years ago bragging and lying about what George Bernard Shaw said about Muhammad so never never take something like this for granted as you see they did not say to us which page which book you know it's a statement and i will not be surprised if one day muslims they made an article saying christian prince the author of etc etc books he said that muhammad the most amazing prophet and i will not be even surprised if they say that christian prince before he died a second before he died he spoke to a rooster and the rooster told him to convert to Islam and he lost his debate with the rooster and he said Shahada Welcome To the lies You see when uh, uh, When you speak about Muhammad you will notice that Muhammad was not really successful because he is a genius leader but because things happen in a way where make him successful the Arab they are they were not be able to unite against him uh, he was able to you know to join the criminals the Sa'alik Sa'alik al-Arab which is equal to what it's called outlaw in USA in the West in the old days which is equal today to criminals who they are wanted for killing hitmen. They call them Saadik in Arabic. He convinced them that if you join me, you will not be considered an outlaw no more. You will be considered heroes, and you are fighting for God. And still, you will do take your booty, which means exactly the same job you used to do before. We attack people, we take their women, we take their money, and yet people respect you. So the Saadik, they join Muhammad. And for sure, we can find, I mean, reference for that. And as you see, you know, we are not like the Muslims who make a statement. But they have no proof of it. You will see here Muhammad. And look what the Muslim, they translate the hadith as an example, uh, as an example. They translate the hadith here saying, Allah Messenger said, Rejoice, O group of poor immigrant. They translate the word Sa'alik into poor immigrant. The fact this is absolutely false. Sa'alik is a word mean the criminals who they are outlaw, who they are spit from their tribes, out of their tribe, for they are wanted for awful, disgusting crimes like rape, killing, kidnapping, etc. So in Arabic here it says, Abshiru ya ma'ashara sa'alik. This is the hadith, and this is this is Sahih hadith. You know, uh, and for sure the Muslims here they would try to say that this is a weak hadith, but even weak hadith is accepted. They are sa'alik, and they are outlaw, and they are criminals. And Muhammad was nothing but a leader of a criminal. And there's tons of reference speaking of that anyway. Muhammad himself, 
how even he succeed to marry Khadija if you read the story you will see that Muhammad is nothing but a scam and he have no dignity if we search and I will show you the story well I don't know if we can find it in English but I don't think so but at least we will show it in Arabic There's tons of videos made by the Muslim sheikhs proud proud about how Muhammad he became a prophet By the legs of his wife This is the book of a Sirah, the book of Ibn Hisham Very number one, the chapter name Imtihanu Khadija Burhanul Wahi, page number two three nine, as you see in the screen. The story here is simple. Muhammad supposedly he sees somebody, and he is not sure if he's an angel or not. Uh, and he told his wife. I see someone who sit in the corner from time to time, but he don't talk to me and I'm not sure if this is an angel or not His wife Khadija According to the story not according to me He said she said to him well next time you see him my cousin Inform me So we can see what we will do The guy he saw Jibreel, supposedly the angel Jibreel, sitting again in the corner of his room. His wife, she came and she asked him, as you see in the screen for those who speak Arabic, he said, Hada Jibreel This is Jibreel, he came to me. She said, Stand up, my cousin, sit in the top of my right thigh. He did sit and sit in the right thigh of his wife Khadija. Then she said, Hal tarah? Do you see him? He said, Yes. She said, Stand and sit in my left thigh. And she said, Do you see him? After he sat in her left thigh, the right thigh. Uh, he, uh, she said, Do you see him? He said, Yes. Then she said, stand up and sit in the top of my lap. And then she, after he did sit in her lap, she said, do you see him? He said, yes. And now she said, and so sorry, and now uh, when he is in the top of her, she took off her clothes. She started taking off her clothes. And then she, uh, 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 she said, do you see him? He said no she said the glory to Allah this is not a shaitan this is an angel now we have a prophet of God he sees someone in the corner but he is not sure if he is an angel or not but by the help of the legs of his wife Khadija and by her doing striptease she was confirming to him that this is an angel have you ever heard of a silly stupid story more than this? Why the Muslims when they start talking about Muhammad seeing an angel don't start from here They speak about Muhammad receiving a message from Allah when he was in the cave of Hara However, even that story is even more silly and more stupid But they don't give you details when they speak about it because it is silly as we said If we go here, this is again Sahih al Bukhari. It says here that how what it's called angel came to him and how he squeezed Muhammad three times, and each time he squeezed him, he said to him, Read.
breathe carefully with me please especially if you are a Muslim in case you know how to read and you are not illiterate as the Muslim they say about their Prophet till suddenly and look you know how the Muslims even the uh, they falsely translate they say till suddenly the truth descended it doesn't say it says the true vision descended how that can be vision is that a vision or real the true vision descended upon him while he was in the cave of Hura the angel came to him and he asked him to read and here we right away we notice how the poopoo started and the, from the first word Muhammad he spoke of that he received from his God Allah he got himself busted if the Muslims agree and they believe that Muhammad was an illiterate why in the world an angel of God he said to a man who do not know read when he do not know how to read and remember the angel here is saying what Allah he said to him to say this is not his own word which means the angel is not even speaking to Muhammad it is just he is telling him what Allah told him to say and this is what we see exactly in the Quran where he said to him read read in the name of your Lord so if you ask Muslims and as we see here you know our Skype is open any any Muslim he's welcome to call us if you have the courage to answer about this you will find that there's no Muslim there to explain to us how silly how stupid this is a story and if you don't believe me that there's no Muslim there to explain this story here we go my Skype is open who is the Muslim who dare to call me right now and to explain how silly, how stupid this is a story? If there's anyone? You know, before I started my broadcast today, actually, after I announced that I'm going to go, I was supposed to go live yesterday on air, and less than 30 minutes after, we have uh, many dislikes. The Muslim did not even hear me yet. They give me this guy dislike. I mean, I did not even talk. I got this like. What about you give me a call, Abdul, and you give me a dislike in the front of everybody and show everybody why you should not listen to Christian Prince? Who is the Muslim? He have the courage and the knowledge who is going to explain to us what is this story is about. How in the world this story can be true? Now, in case you do not know why I'm saying this story cannot be true, it's a, it's a, it's a scam, it's a lie. Read what happened. Suddenly, the angel he came to him and he asked him to read. The prophet replied, saying, "I do not know how to read." Hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, here the poopoo is really getting big. We have God. And again, I say to you here that the angel he is speaking of what God supposedly told him to say is not the angel speaking. God, he knows supposedly if Muhammad knows how to read, how not to read, or you know, if, or he do not know how to read. How in the world Allah he said to Muhammad, read, yet Muhammad do not know how to read. Unless maybe he is trying to do a miracle. As an example, Jesus says to the man who cannot walk, walk. But you will notice in the story of the man who cannot walk, he walk. The man, he cannot walk. He's a very well-known person in the street who spent years begging for money. A person who is disabled or the guy who is a blind. See, he saw. Walk, he walk. Allah, he said to Muhammad, read. And here we have a problem. Either Allah do not know that Muhammad do not know how to read. And that means the story is stupid.
or Allah he wanted to make a miracle to make Muhammad read even though he do not know how to read and that will make sense but according to Muslims Muslims they believe that Muhammad he was not a person who read and he cannot read still the Prophet continues saying that the angel he cut me forcefully and he pressed me so hard that I could not bear it anymore and then he released me and again asked me to read here is getting more bigger the poopoo because why the angel is not getting it that this guy do not know how to read and why he insists he want him to read are you are we following guys if I just if, if, if one of you he called me he said to me speak to me in Chinese and I say I do not know Chinese and then you squeeze me and then you uh, press me hard and you say speak Chinese and I say I do not know Chinese hello I mean how silly the story is and then the angel he squeeze him and I replied which means Muhammad I do not know how to read whereupon he cut me again and he pressed me for the second time till I could not bear it anymore he then released me and asked me again to read and again I replied I do not know how to read the Muslims here they put between two bracket or what shall I read I mean how silly your bracket is either it is I do not know how to read or what I shall read by the way if the Muslim saying what shall I read that's mean the angel is stupid what's mean he did not give him something to read either way it's a stupid story imagine I say to you read but you did not give me a book to read you did not give me a paper to read so how silly how stupid you are to say to me read but you did not give me something to read so he did not give him anything to read and the guy he did not know even how to read and he keep pressing him so hard what the point of this pressing him hard after the angel he pressed Muhammad first time third second time third time did Muhammad learn how to read no did Muhammad even understand what the angel want no so what the point of pressing him so hard then whereupon he cut me off for the third time and pressed me and released me and he said read in the name of your Lord that's it Say it from the beginning without squeezing and freezing. The guy is dying between your arms, Mr. Angels. All of this drama just to say to him, read in the name of your Lord. So Muhammad been squeezed three times. Enter the guy, the poor guy cannot breathe and almost he have mayonnaise coming from his ass. After all the squeezing of an angel who is so strong like Muhammad Ali. And now, Muhammad Ali, he says to him, read in the name of your Lord. They say it from the beginning. However, still the issue is not solved. Read in the name of your Lord. Read what? Read in the name of your Lord. Okay. Read what, man? Did Muhammad receive a book? No. Muslims they say no okay did Muhammad know how to read no so the whole story is silly and stupid and we don't see in the articles Muslims speaking about how silly the beginning of Islam is and then after that in the same story where we speak about Muhammad being a prophet of God receiving an angel message you will see that Muhammad he tried to commit suicide
And by the way, the angel, when he spoke to Muhammad, he did not even say to him, I am an angel. He did not say, who is he? He just said, read in the name of your Lord. If you look with me here, it says that Khadija, she took her husband, Muhammad, to her cousin, who his name is Waraq ibn Nawfal, ibn Abdul Uzza, all of them, they are pagan. Here we go. He is the son of Abdul Uzza. Ibn Qusay, which means he is from the same family of Muhammad. And I believe strongly that Waraqa is the real father of Muhammad. If you have my book, Deception of Allah, you will find that Waraqa, he sent his sister and she offered 100 camel to the father of Muhammad so he can do bang bang with her. I mean, how in the world this story can be not fishy? Why this guy, he sent his sister to give a man who is no one 100 camel to sleep with her and what kind of a father muhammad he used to be he's a jigolo because a man he received payment for sex he is a no, i want to say the word uh, he's a whore they call him jigolo right but he is a whore and this is in islamic books And then this man, Waraka, he told Muhammad, ah, oh, this is an angel. This is an angel. But we heard in the previous story where Khadija, she asked Muhammad to move from this leg to this leg. Already Muhammad, he saw this angel. He knew him, why he is, you know, he did not know who is he. To the point he went to his wife Khadija and he said to her, he was shivering and going crazy. He said to her, cover me, cover me, cover me. And she covered him till his fear was over and then he said to her oh Khadija what's wrong with me and then he said I fear that something may happen to me and this is a clear sign of Muhammad being a crazy man what I fear something may happen to me what does that mean then Khadija she took him To her cousin who is the real father of Muhammad and then Waraka according to the Muslim stories by the way Muslim stories mean nothing to me but I'm just reading for you what they say a Muslim witness for something this mean it is 99.9999 is a lie but we have to deal with it what we can do so she took her, she took him to Waraka ibn Nawfal and then it says here who during the pre-islamic period become a nasara not christian nasara are a cult which like jehovah's witnesses and used to write arabic writing and used to write the gospel in arabic and this is the quran this is the quran quran actually the word quran is coming from the aramaic uh, 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 christian when they pray they say qira'a you see, when we in the, in the Bible until now, you know, in the Middle East, even those who pray in Arabic, when they want to read from John chapter one, or let us say uh, the book of Act, so they say Qira'a mean Kitab, Qira'a mean uh, from the book of John, Qira'a. All right. So Muhammad he received Qira'a, which is Quran, which is a summary of supposedly the Gospel. And this is what Waraq ibn Nawfal was writing. And you notice here, I mean, what is the coincidence here? That there's a guy in the time of Muhammad is writing a book in Arabic, which is supposedly a translation for the Arabic Bible. What is that Bible exist? How the Muslim, they say to us that the Arabic Bible or the Bible, sorry, was corrupt. Yet the Muhammad himself, he praised this man and he say he go to heaven. And yet this man is a translating what is called gospel into Arabic. And as you see, not only he is translating the gospel by his own, no, he was doing a message a mission by Allah permission as much as Allah wished him to write. So there's no way that what he was writing 
is not right for Muslims. He was an old man and had lost his eyesight. Khadija said to him, Oh, my cousin, etc. Listen to the story. But then Waraka, he died. Waraka, he died. It says here, after a few days, Waraka of the Nofal, he died. And the divine inspiration was also paused. Why Allah he stopped sending Quran because Waraka he died. The answer is very simple. Because Waraka he was writing the gospel in Arabic, which is the Quran. And he was given Muhammad Quran. And now Waraka he died. And Muhammad do not know what to do. Waraka he died. And the divine inspiration was also paused. As if Allah, he get his juice for his battery from Waraka. Waraka he died, that's it. And then you will see, it says, for a while the prophet become so sad. We do not know for a while how long. A month, two months, a year, we do not know. Become so sad, as we have heard, that he intended several times to throw himself from the tops of the high mountains. What do you think of that, Muslims? Why a prophet of God, guided by God, inspired by God, he tried to kill himself? And then you notice here that every time he went up to the top of the mountain in order to throw himself down, Jibreel would appear before him and say, Oh Muhammad, you are indeed Allah Messenger. In the truth, whereupon his heart would become quiet and would calm down and return home. So what's the problem here? Muhammad, he don't believe that he's a prophet. Muhammad, he want to kill himself many, many times. Muhammad, he climbed the mountain. There again, there again, there again, there again, there again, he is going up to the mountain. And right before Muhammad, he jumped from the top of the mountain. Let us make the story here more clear, if you don't mind. This is the mountain. And Muhammad is a climb in the mountain. Muhammad here, then here, then here, then here, then uh, I'm getting tired. And here, uh, okay, almost there. After five, six hours, Muhammad is here. And now Muhammad is going to jump from the top of the high mountain. Suddenly, Mr. Jibreel, he appeared. With his 600 angels, uh, wings, and he hold Muhammad from his panty. Muhammad, please, don't throw yourself. Muhammad, don't do it. Muhammad, I will buy you candies. Muhammad, listen to me, look at me. You are a truly prophet of Allah. Muhammad, you are a truly, truly a prophet of Allah. And then the prophet, okay, okay, I will believe you. All right, I am a truly prophet of Allah, okay. I will not throw myself. And then Muhammad now, after this drama is over, Muhammad, he go again and he continue his trip to go down. Go here, go here, go here. 
go here, go here, and then he go home. And he sleep between the legs of his wife. And then, second day come, or two days after, Muhammad, he do the same story. Muhammad is here. 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 And Muhammad is here. I cannot move. Oh, man, this mountain is so high. I wish Allah can install an elevator. And then finally, Muhammad is here. And then the angel, in the last second, he come to him and say, Habibi Muhammad, Habibi, my name is Benjamin Netanyahu, Habibi. Please, Muhammad, don't jump from the top of the mountain. We are Jew and we like you. I mean, look how funny, how silly, how stupid this is a story. Why, Jibreel, don't come to the poor guy when he is here in the first step? Why he wait for him until he climbed the whole mountain and then he appeared to him and he hold him? Can Jibreel come to him from the first step? Say, Habibi Muhammad, where are you going, Muhammad? Habibi Muhammad, where are you going? Let me let me climb the mountain. Why he didn't do that from the beginning? Why he wait for him until the guy in the top of the mountain and he want to throw himself and now he want to hold him? That's an American movie, my friend. Actually, it fit better to be a Mexican one or Indian. Or let us say to be more or original Ara Arabian movie uh, full of emotion and you know stupid stories You watch Arabian movies a guy he hit the guy we hear the hit 15 minutes before the hit and you wonder what does that sound? Hmm. Oh now, okay now we know he hit him now 15 minutes ago. We heard the sound of the hit a very funny stupid movie Now why in the world the man who is inspired by God Protected by God, guided by God, is guided to the top of the mountain to throw himself. And why Allah He posed the inspiration? And He knew that this will lead Muhammad to commit suicide. And why Muhammad is feeling or suffering from depression? Questions no Muslims can answer. Those questions, no Muslims can answer. It's a stupid cult, stupid story, and who have a brain these days to use it? It's an insult these days to use your brain. And the funny, the Muslim, they say to us that committing suicide is haram. And actually, Muhammad, he says, by the way, committing suicide to kill yourself, but, but not to do like ISIS. Uh, the Quran says, which means they kill, and they will be killed, which means suicide. But Muhammad in the Quran said, as an example, the Hadith, that if a man he tried to throw himself or he throw himself from the top of a mountain to kill himself, he will sit in hell for hellfire forever. But Muhammad himself is doing that. You know, always since I was a, a, a kid, I noticed that. In order to live in the Middle East or to survive in the Middle East, you have to act like as you are stupid and you did not see something wrong. Do you want to live? Don't question. Because if you question, you die. Who dare to question? How silly, how stupid those stories are. How dare you?
Now, if you go and make some uh, study, or let us say some search, I mean, these days people, they do a uh, study for you, right? You have the computer, two words, you can find many an answer. Why a human being will think about committing suicide, especially it is not once or twice, it's many times. What is the reason, really? You know, when a person, he lose hope, suffering from a very huge amount of depression, or he is suffering from mental illness. He go and commit suicide. People do gambling as an example. They lose all their money. They go to Las Vegas rich, wealthy. He come back home, zero. Homeless, and he notice how stupid he is. He could not handle it. He kill himself. Now, why Muhammad, he tried to commit suicide? Do we have any Muslim would like to give us a call and tell us why Muhammad is doing such an act? Somebody is asking me if Muhammad, he have an epilepsy. And I have to agree. Actually, I have that in my book too. Muhammad, obviously, he is suffering from many issues and it's not a shame, by the way, if you have epilepsy. I mean, it's an illness. It's not you are you are not a criminal. But the funny is, if somebody suffering from mental illness, then we make him a prophet and we make him a leader, and then he control our life. And to prove that Muhammad have a you know suffering from mental illness, we do not need to go farther. I mean, the the the, the stories of Muhammad is full of it. As an example, the Muslim they say that once the Prophet was bewitched, so that he began to imagine that he had done a thing which in fact he had not done. Now you tell me, what is the explanation of somebody imagining that he had done something but in fact he did not do that thing? Isn't it obvious? This person suffering from illusion. And not only that. Muhammad, he say things which is silly and stupid to the point it goes beyond imagination. Look at this. My uncle asked Allah Apostle about a person who imagined to have 14 during his prayer Allah Apostle he said he should not leave his prayer unless he hear it and he smell it I mean this guy obviously he is a genius if you ask the Muslims why if you fart your prayer is not accepted they say because it's a dirt okay well if it's a dirt what a difference will make if it if you hear it and it's smith or if you don't hear it it's a dirt anyway so what hear it and smith will do mm. i hope my microphone is far enough i hope nobody heard something especially if he's a muslim and he's praying now And then you will notice Muhammad. Suffering from other issues. To the point, even his sex was fake. Read carefully, this is not me speaking, this is his wife Aisha. His favorite sex doll. Aisha, she said, the prophet continued for such and such period, imagining that he had bang bang boom boom you know you know the list of the bing bong do go do go cuckoo cuckoo yama yama huh let's use the word sex in all languages but in fact he did not 
I mean, you tell me what is the situation here? A guy, he is over the age of 50. And he, not sure if he did have sex or not. He imagined it. And not, he is not imagining it when he's sleeping. No, he's imagining during daytime that he had sex with his wife. Now, what we call this uh, case? There is a movie, if you want to understand what I'm talking about, it's called The Perfect Host. I advise all of you to watch, but be careful. It's an, uh, like uh, have a, some adult scene. You, you have to be six years and older if you are a Muslim to watch it. Because they say to us, Aisha, she was adult at the age of six. And they say to us, at that time, they used to marry at this age of six and six years old, they are mature. Hmm. Actually, my mom, she told me she gave birth when she was two days old. Yeah, we are Arab, man. I mean, true story. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother, she gave birth when she was two second old. And her, her grand grandmother, she gave birth even before she was born. True story. Now, Muhammad is imagining himself having sex with his wife, but in fact, he did not. The question he was imagining having sex with who then? Because obviously, he was doing something. Because this is not at night, this is during daytime. The guy was holding what exactly? Use your imagination. And based on what the Muslim they say to us, how we can trust Muhammad that he is not even imagining that he saw an angel and he heard an angel? Do we understand, people? How we can trust such a guy who he even his sex? I mean, have you ever heard of sex? No, have no witnesses. I never heard of somebody having sex, but yet there is no witness. Even the wife, she is not there. Like you asked me, do you have sex yesterday? I said, yeah, I have sex with my wife. I mean, my wife, you ask her, she said, no, he did not. What? No, he did not. He did not even touch me. Even his sex have no witnesses. Not only he saw an angel, an angel squeezed him, blah, blah, blah. He went to seven heaven, nobody saw that. Even his sex have no witnesses. What's wrong with this guy? There is a very chapter, a very famous chapter, the Muslim they recite every day and give you a headache with it. Five times a day, they have to recite it. It's called Al-Fatiha. If I tell you when the Al-Fatiha was given to Muhammad, you will not believe. Have you ever heard of somebody receive the most important chapter to pray every day, five times, during doing poo, -poo? I never heard of such a thing before. The guy is doing poo poo. His God, he sent him that chapter during the poo poo time. Can't he wait? Read with me the Muslim translation trying to cover up the ass of Muhammad doing poo poo. It says, The Messenger of Allah. Allah pray on him and salute him. Whenever he went out, what went out? Hello? What do you mean went out? It says in Arabic, baraza, you know, to do baraz, to do shit. Excuse my language. Hey, Tony, the prophet is doing shit, though. I mean, why you don't say it as it is? What do you mean he went out? Went out where? He used to hear someone calling him, Oh, Muhammad. And whenever he heard this, he used to flee. What the heck? And why he is fleeing? 
I mean, Muhammad already is a prophet. He heard the he heard the angel many time. The angel already squeezed him many time too. Like we have now a physical relationship. Like squeeze me, squeeze me. We are in a squeezy town. Hey, Tony, squeeze the guy. He did not pay us the money for this month. Kill him. After all the squeeze and the talking to the prophet and the angel coming to him, and now the prophet he heard the voice of the angel, he flee. And look again, the name of who this uh, appear in the story. Did you notice the name of who appeared in the story? Did you notice the name of who appeared right away in the story? Warak of the Nofal. What's wrong with this Warak of the Nofal? He exists everywhere. Warak of the Nofal advised him. A guy who is not a prophet advising the prophet what to do with an angel? Why? Why Allah don't advise him? Why Allah don't make him stay so he can hear? No, no, the guy, his name is Duraka, is the one who he knows everything. He advised him. He said to him, Prophet, 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 when the caller call him, uh, stay so you can hear what he want to say to you, Prophet. And then again, Muhammad, he went to do Pupu. And then, so when he went out to do Buraz, he heard the calling, Oh, Muhammad. I mean, the guy, he just ran away because the guy, he said, Oh, Muhammad. What if he say, Oh, mommy? Oh, mommy. Oh, mommy, mommy blue. Oh, mommy blue. Oh, Mimi. Oh, moo moo. Oh, mama, moo moo, ma. mama, moo moo. The guy he said to him, Oh, Muhammad, the guy he run. Why? I mean, obviously, the guy want to talk to you. Why you run? Are you a coward? You scared at night? Are you scared at night? Ah, you are scared. Uh, the kitty, 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 Muhammad. Very cute. Imagine I am walking at night and I hear somebody saying to me, Oh, Christian, I start trying. Did again, did again, did again, did again, did again, did again. Oh, I keep saying to me, Oh, Christian, and keep running. Did again, did again. I mean, how silly, how stupid. Should I draw it for you? I mean, seriously, should I draw it? You know, I'm very good in art, right? Let us do some art for those who like arts. Guys, be honest with me. I, 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 I am an artist by, by birth. Uh, is that correct? I mean, you can tell how good I am in drawing. I can't resist the temptation of a drawing. And I, I, I apologize because I'm using the mouse to draw, you know. Now, it is dark. It is nighttime. Muhammad here, he is in his house. Muhammad, now he need to do pupu. Muhammad, he come out. Muhammad, he decide to walk a little bit from the house so he can do pupu and nobody smell his pupu. Muhammad, he come here and he sit and he start squeezing it. And while he is squeezing it, the angel he come from the sky and he say to him oh muhammad the second the guy he hear oh muhammad he flee there again there again there again there again and muhammad he run and oh muhammad is following him i do not know what happened to the poop was coming from his bum but I can tell where it's going. By the way, uh, in case you don't know, according to Muslims, when the Prophet of Allah Muhammad he do pupu, the earth swallow his pupu immediately and produce a beautiful fragrance of perfume. 
If you don't believe me, if you are a Muslim, call me and I will show you the reference. Call me. Answer me. Silence me. For 4,000 years. There's any Muslim wanna call me? Hmm? Any Abdul? Anyone? So I mean, look at this. This prophet he ran away for hearing the voice of an angel. The angel come to him when he is doing poo poo. The angel he squeezed him many times already. Muhammad is the last one to know what's happening. A guy, his name is Waraka, is exist everywhere in every corner, and he is the one who tell him what to do. Waraka, he write Quran. Muhammad don't receive Quran because Waraka he die, and now Muhammad try to commit suicide. Muhammad he don't remember. Muhammad he forget. Muhammad have a bad memory. Muhammad he claim to cover his ass about he forgetting the Quran always. That Allah he sent him the Quran in seven letters. And the whole purpose of the seven letters is to explain why he cannot recite the same verse twice correctly. We can say Muhammad is a madman. However, there is somebody is assisting him with the silly ideas to cover his ass. As an example, this is story. Let's find it. Muhammad claiming that Allah He sent him the Quran in seven letters, which means there is seven Qurans. Muhammad he stuck with number seven, you notice. And for sure he took that number, copying the Jews and copying the Bible. Seven ajwa. If you eat seven ajwa, no poison can kill you. And then later we found that Muhammad he died by poison himself. And if you eat seven ajwa, no magic can infect you. And Muhammad himself was under magic, according to Muslims. Look at this funny story. The Prophet so 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 was present at the pool of Bani Ghafir, or in Jibreel, he came to him and said, Allah has commanded you. To make your community read the Quran in one half. What? 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 Allah has commanded you to read the Quran in one half. I mean, why the Muslim even don't translate what one half mean? How a how a person who don't speak Arabic he will know what one half? Here, this translation is better. So he said in one dialect. What one dialect? This is different reading, obviously. To the point, uh, there is a brother, his name is Samshi. Sam he was explaining how two Muslims are fighting because they are reading the same verse differently. And then they took them to the Prophet. And then the Prophet, he said to the first one, read it. And he said to him, you are right, correct. He told the other guy, read it. But the guy, the second guy, he read differently. He said to him, you are right. Why? Because simply both of them, they heard it from Muhammad as he said. But the guy, he's a liar. He cannot recite the same thing twice. So he had to cover his ass. They never heard him before saying that Allah gave me the Quran in seven letters. After he got busted, he cannot recite the Quran twice correctly. He come with this story. Allah has commanded you to recite to your people the Quran in one dialect. Upon this, he said, who is the one who said Muhammad? And look what Muhammad said. Khabibi Allah. Allah, please, Allah. Allah, listen to me, Allah. I ask Allah from Allah burden. 
and forgiveness. My people are not capable. I know my people. They are crazy. They cannot. They are not capable. What? What? Hold on, maybe we have Abdul calling. I don't know. Only if you are a Muslim, you can call me. If you are not, I will block you. Let us see this guy. All right. Hello. All right. Mute YouTube, please. Hello. Yes. All right. Hello. Yes, Abdul. Go ahead. What do you want to say to us about the topic? Topic. I, I just uh, get into it. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, in front of us here, it says that Allah Messenger. Uh, he received a message from the angel that Allah told him to recite the Quran in one letter, one uh, language in Arabic. And then the prophet, he did not like that. He said to him, I ask Allah forgiveness. My people are not capable of doing it. Then the angel, he came back from Allah and he gave him command to read the Quran in two letters. And then the prophet, he says, I seek burden of forgiveness. My people are not capable of doing it. And he kept repeating that until he reached the seven Quran. What do you say about that? I, I don't know really the, the hadith that you're talking about. Uh, all I'm saying is he asked him to decide in Arabic and he said he cannot decide in Arabic. No, what he's saying? No, my, my friend, you were watching me on YouTube or no? I was not. So a so, friend told so, me about so why it. You, why, you, why you call me, if you don't mind? Just now. I mean, why you what? call me? I called you because I heard you there lying on Islam. I'm lying about Islam like what? Like everything. Thank you. Give me one. Like, 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 the, like the last time I, I heard you talk to uh, uh, this guy called Abbas. Hmm. And uh, he was telling you about the verse on righteousness, verse uh, Surah number 2, verse 177. He hmm. was supposed to be coming back on it. Hmm. And he said, and, and he said, freeing the slaves okay. He's in there. Hmm. You pointed the verse in Arabic hmm. and you ref you jump the word Rikabi, meaning freeing the necks of slaves. Okay. Freeing the neck is, is freeing the slave. And okay. you lied. Okay. Let's Every see. Arab person okay, okay, watching okay, you. Okay, okay, let's what, go. What, 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 uh, no, chapter, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We, 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 we will put it in the screen and we'll make you read it. Let us see who's lying. Chapter 2, verse number what? 177. All right. Here we go. The verse in the front of you. Read it for us. <clears throat> You read it. No, you read it. Don't you speak Arabic. No, I want you to show me. You read it. You read no, no, no. I want you to show me. I want you to show me so we can love together. Go ahead. I want you to read the verse for everybody. That's it. Abdul, it's in front of Don't you. Jump the word Rigabi. Abdul, you Abdul, jump the Abdul. What is Rigab? It says what is Rigab, and be merciful with the what you own. A Rigab is the next you own. Where it says a free a slave. Show me the word. The 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 next what is a neck you own a neck you own that everybody knows a neck freeing a neck is a slave where it a says the free where it says the word free here we go it says be good to those who they are orphan and the poor and the one who is in the street and don't who is begging you for money and the next where it says free the next do you see the word free Rikabi, do you see the word free the neck you potato listen either you get me busted or i'm spanking you hard now can you show me where it says free the next okay now don't tell me now that. don't tell me now you accuse me offline and you said it's there yes and now we you went there it doesn't say you that you are a better word you are a better you like you're a prophet you show me where it. no show you me where it, it says see? show me where is the word free the next it says be good to those and those and those so be good to those who they are your slaves is what it says okay 
Okay, if it is what it is, why did you refuse to to read it last time? Why did you jump the world? Why you highlight the world before no, in the world after? that you don't care. I am the one who challenged him. I said to him, "Show me." You you highlight the world before I, it but, and but, the world after show, it. You refuse to read the world. Here we go. You are I here now. I watch the video. The video is still shut, on YouTube. Shut, shut up, potato. You are here now, and you can prove it still. <laughs> Why you don't prove it? Here we go. We have the verse in the front of you. I did the same exactly with him, and you became a better to like him now. I fried you. Show me where it said to free the slave. I want to see it. Are you laughing at yourself or your prophet? I am laughing at you. Then show me. Everybody is watching. Here we go. Everybody is, everybody is watching. Show me where it says to free the slave. I want to see it. I'm I'm telling you, if it is not free the slave, why show do you me, want show to me where it says that where it says that you donkey, you are a certified donkey like your prophet. Show me where it says that, otherwise you get busted. You just hold on, let me be on YouTube. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Show me where it says that. Everybody is laughing at you. You made a challenge, either hold you are on, a man I, and you prove it, or everybody is I, laughing at you. I stopped my YouTube, I gotta go live back, okay, mm -hmm. and I gotta mute it. Hold on. You made a change. Either you are a man and you mute, mute. Just mute it there. I stopped my YouTube. I gotta go live, but okay. I gotta mute it. Hold on. Okay, now highlight. Now hi. Oh, I'm stopping. You made a change. Okay, I muted. Okay. Where is now? The free? Where is the free? Now, free? Okay, uh, okay, now listen to me. Mm -hmm. You wanna be truthful, right? Abdul, either you, you back, no, 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 you accuse me to be a liar. I don't want to be a bus. No, 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 you, you are a donkey. I call you donkey unless you prove me wrong. I call you donkey from now. I will call you a horse if you prove me right. You prove yourself right. Here we go with the verse in the front of you. I want you to read it. First of all, you do not know how to read Arabic, do you? Uh, I'm not going to tell you. Do you know how to read Arabic? So, how you donkey, you tell me if it's there or I not. Maybe I'm highlighting the wrong word. How you, you, how you say to me, I know what the record means, you do not know Arabic, you donkey. So, you do not know Arabic. And you do not I know even what the you, word is there. I, I and you do not know you, how link. you are a certified donkey. You. Listen, 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 everybody is laughing. You do not know Arabic, yet you are calling an Arab guy and you challenge him to prove it. And yet, we show you the verse and we say, Show me. You cannot show me because you are a certified donkey. I showed you the word ar You showed me we have a rikab is there, but doesn't say free yeah, free, free your neck, you donkey. Said, so listen, why you, now you see how it's let me to talk, though. You see you're how gonna let me Abdul, talk Abdul, because you know I, Abdul, I'm gonna catch you shut up and talk. get lost, you son of Muta. <laughs> when you call a Christian prince a liar, you have to prove him to be a liar, otherwise you get busted. A donkey, you do not even know Arabic. Do you know Arabic? I'm not going to tell you. Why you don't want to tell me? Because you're a donkey. You're ashamed. A false translation. It says, set the slaves free. Did Muhammad set the slaves free? Yeah, hey, Abdul. Yes. Are you going to read it or not? Don't make me shout. I'm losing my voice. Are you going to listen to me or not? No, I don't want to listen to you. I want you to show me. I already told you to. The, the, no, no, the, no, you uh, do not tell me. It says they are big. Listen to me. Good, the world donkey, is listening. Donkey, if you don't want to listen, donkey, it means you are a liar. Donkey, listen to donkey, me first. You are Let a, me talk. You are a donkey. Otherwise, to prove me wrong, where it says a free the slave. Where it let says a free the slaves. I, I want to see it. it. After you let me talk. No, no, I don't want you to let talk. I want you to read it. Show me where it says a free the slave. I'm telling you, I want you to pull the video you made with Abbas and put it on the screen right now and uh, and show the world what you did. How, how how you jump that word? Abdul, I don't know. Right Abdul, now. you don't care. No, I, I did not jump anything. You are a coward. And here we go. Listen, listen. Let us say, let us say you are saying the truth. I jumped the word in the time of Abbas, as you claim. How I can jump it in front of a screen, you donkey? How I can jump it? Pull it. Pull it. Shut up. You, you, you want the link? Shut up, donkey. You want the link? Give me the video. Give me the video. You want the link? Give me the video. You want the link? I'm losing my I got voice. a link here. Give me, give me the video. Give me the video. I'll, I'll, okay. play, it. I'll play it for you. Okay, hold on. Hmm. You're a liar, man. This guy is just a liar, man. That's a son of Muta. I like your prophet. <clears throat> Give me the video. I'm not gonna insult you because you you you, you insulted me. But by the second you call me, you call me a liar, and I have the right to answer you and get you busted. 
You and because Abbas I, and your I, I prophet, all, all of yes, you are no, from no. one, one kind, you, a bunch of you are liars, and you have no proof of what you say. And when we get you busted, you run away. Now, on, uh, uh, just, you know, until you find the video. Why you cannot show me what Abbas could not show me? Ab uh, listen, Abbas told you. Uh, uh, no, no, no. You, what you, why you don't show me to me Abbas now? Why you don't show it to me now? Arabic. Here we go. We are here. Let us say Abbas is with us now. And no, now you are here. Why you don't show no. me what Abbas missed? I, I'm asking you to read the verse. You don't want to read it. Abdul, you do not know it. how to read it. You are a donkey. You read it in Arabic. It doesn't and say. So, it doesn't say. So, so any translation. Ab Ab Abdul, Abdul, so Abdul it says. So any translation. Uh, 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 Nowhere it says the yes. free the slave is a you, donkey. You are a donkey. You you listen, listen donkey. Don't call me again. You are a son of Muta like your prophet. They do not know Arabic and they cannot even find the word. And when I said to him, read it, he said to me, You read it because they do not know how to read it. This is how stupid, how silly they are. And look at this. Are you saying to me that Christian Prince, all what he said for the last three hours, it is a true, and this one is not a true? <laughs> yeah, Abbas, how are you? Yeah, hello, CP. Are you right? How are you? CP, yes, I, I did for you. Say I will give you 10,000 years to come. We lost next day, and you never give me a chance. What? And I, I, I want to clarify this uh, chapter 2, verse 177. Uh -huh. But um, can you open Ibn Kathir and let's see what he says? No, no, you see, you, you want to Ibn, Ibn Kathir? Do you accept Ibn Kathir? Ah, you see, when you want to, no, 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 I, no, I'm showing you, I'm showing you that you are a donkey, I'm showing you that you are a donkey, like your prophet. Unless you say, I accept Ibn Kathir always, then I will not show you Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir here, he cannot say it says that unless it says that where it says, here we go, the verse in front of me, where it says, the free the slave. Uh, can you open Ibn Kathir or not? You know, Ibn listen, Ibn listen, Kathir, listen, 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 you can open it as you wish, you can read as you wish. Still, you have okay, to show me. Know, still, still, still you have to show me where it says in the verse "free the slave." Can we? Uh, don't I have do the you, right? You see, listen, Abdul. You said to me, if I open Ibn Kathir for you, do you swear by Allah? But whatever Ibn Kathir he says, you accept. Uh, why? Look, I'm not saying I believe it. Ibn no, 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 no. I'm said, asking you. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Let, listen, listen. Let you are being a hypocrite now. You let are being hypocrite. Let Either you accept Ibn Kathir or you don't accept Ibn Kathir. If you accept Ibn, Ibn, Ibn Kathir, I will go with Ibn Kathir. I will agree with you. Let us make a deal. Do you accept Ibn Kathir? Yeah. Say, I swear by Allah, whatever Ibn Kathir yeah. he says about the Quran, I agree with it. You're talking over me. Can I say something? Uh, no, I want you to swear by Allah that you accept Ibn Kathir. You're holding me from my neck and you want me to say, say it what I'm saying. Did you say Come neck? On, did, did you say neck? I did not hold you from your neck. I hold you from your tail. You don't have a neck. Now answer me. Either Ibn no, Kathir no, is the no, person, no, listen, no. either Ibn Kathir is a trustworthy to explain the Quran for you or the Quran or you don't accept Ibn, Quran, uh, Ibn Kathir. Do you accept Ibn Kathir? Say yes. CP, don't do that, please. See, see you, how you coward you are? Coward you, see, right you see, guys, you see how the liars, Ibn Kathir, he is a, a, a given you, interpretation you, because you, you like his interpretation. Yeah, Listen, I, let me show you how stupid you are because you like his interpretation here, but you don't like his interpretation there. You don't want to say, I accept Ibn Kathir. This is the whole idea. So, okay, who are you? My who are, how you, how are you know Ibn Kathir is right here? Ibn Kathir is wrong there. Who are you? Either Ibn Kathir <laughs> is a qualified to explain the Quran or he is not. Is he or not? You are letting me speak again. I, I want an to answer. To I want an Just answer. Is Ibn Kathir, is Ibn Kathir the one who explained the Quran? Shut up, you idiot. Either, either you say Ibn Kathir is good for me and we take whatever he say, or you say I don't accept Ibn Kathir. So there is no other way in the middle. There is no, no other way because you are the one saying to me, this is my guy, this is the guy who will explain it to us. I am I mean, giving you another way. There is another way to that as well. And that way is this. Let people decide. <laughs> Let people Let decide. No, my, my friend, hold on, hold on. First of all, you are a donkey like the one who called me before. You don't speak Arabic. Secondly, nowhere in the verse it says a free the slave. And number three, I challenge any Arab guy who can call me, speak Arabic, and show me where it says a free the slave in the verse. I challenge all the Muslims in the world who speak Arabic. 
I am well, holding I, you. I'm holding I, you from you, your tail. I'm holding you. Quickly. I'm holding you from your tail, not from your neck. I challenge you right now to give me an Arab guy who can call me and show me where it says in the verse of free the slave. That is not the point. Ah, not the point. You are the one who said to me read this verse. So the now words, you agree. Okay, so now hold on, hold on. So now you agree that it doesn't say that in the verse. What agree what that was that you was just said, never the you point. just say that's not the what? point you I said mean, to me hold on shut up shut up shut up I don't have time for kids shut up idiot I say to you show me where in the verse it says that you say that's not the point <laughs> so what the point so what the point you idiot if this is not the point you argue about what no this is the point the point is that this verse says the free the slave or not and we read in Arabic, we cannot find where it says a free the slave. Coward, liars, potatoes, tomatoes. And we force them to read it and show us where it says that this is not the point. So what is the point? <laughs> you made me shout, lose my voice for nothing. You and the donkey before you. Krishna brings your line. And by the way, if a freeing the slave is a duty for a Muslim, why Muhammad he make it legal to own slaves? I mean, how stupid to say, sacrifice a chicken, and then you order them to capture a chicken. Was Muhammad good to his slaves? Did Muhammad free marry the copt? Did he free her cousin Ibn Juraj? Did he free Bilal? Did he free all the slaves he owned? Free the slaves. When you quote for me a verse, I can show you a verse in the Quran that says, Free a slave, not this one, you donkey. Do you want me to help you? Let me show you. You choose the wrong one <clears throat> but even that one or those who speak about a free a free in the slave is not about really reward it's a penalty Muhammad he knew how much the Arab and he is one of them they like to own slaves so he made it as a penalty if you kill a Muslim if you kill a Muslim and you claim it's a mistake then the one who killed the believer a believer only by the way if you kill a non-muslim it's okay only if you kill a Muslim by mistake then you have to free a slave and he have to be Muslim do you see how you free a slave you donkey it's a penalty He knew that those Arab are obsessed, so he wanted them to stop killing each other because he needs fighters to fight his enemy. But they keep fighting each other. So he said to them, even if it's a mistake, oh, you are fighting with him and you don't mean to kill him. And you put your dagger inside his chest, but you don't want you want just to cut him off. You don't want to kill him. If you do that, I will force you to free a slave. And this is a very harmful penalty for those Arab. He did not say to them, don't own slaves. The Quran encouraged people to own slaves. Is it righteousness to attack and bring people into slavery? The one you are trying to sell him out to me, saying the phrase slave, as you claim, he is the one who come with this. You are the best of people ever raised up for the benefit of mankind. Chapter 3, verse 110. The best for mankind are those who bring them with the chains around their necks till they embrace Islam. And this is Sahih al-Bukhari.
so they try to fool us saying that Islam free the slaves when Islam is a machine of generating slavery why the Muslims are the best of mankind because they make you a slave and they put a chain around your neck as if you are a dog and as you see Allah praised in the Muslims you are the best of mankind and why you are the best of mankind because you make people slaves and enslaving people here is to humiliate them so they will believe in Muhammad to be a prophet And yet they say Christian Prince is lying. Potato, tomato. I don't hold you from your neck. I hold you from your tail. Even if it's sometimes it's so short because you cut it off to hide that you are not what you think you are. What kind of cult? What kind of religion? What kind of a stupid cult says such a thing that the best of mankind is those who capture people and enslave them? And supposedly the reason is a noble reason because women have forced them to embrace Islam. So why they are captured? Why they are humiliated? Why they are prisoners? Sex slaves? Slavery forever unless you embrace Islam. And by the way, Muhammad later he changed his mind about a freeing a slave who is even a believing. And we can show tons of examples where people they want to free a believing slave and Muhammad reject. You cannot play with me a bunch of potatoes. Read Ibn Kathir. Okay, is Ibn Kathir is lawful for you? Is he good? Either we accept the scholar you name to be the one who explained the Quran or not. Now, even if we go to Ibn Kathir, if Ibn Kathir is saying he meant to free in the slave, so why the Quran is saying capture slaves? And if Ibn Kathir is saying free the slave, where is the sentence saying that in Arabic? You know, two days ago, this potato he called me actually yesterday, just yesterday. He was driving, right? Or the day before it, as usual. We spoke about the chapter 86, verse number seven. I showed him Ibn Kathir, he don't want Ibn Kathir. <laughs> Ibn Kathir is donkey when he want. Ibn Kathir is a smart when he want. Either we take Ibn Kathir or we don't take Ibn Kathir. Either Ibn Kathir is a person who have a full understanding of the Quran and he is a qualified to explain to you and to me, or he's not. When we speak about the chapter of Ajizia, this coward he sent me a message in Skype saying that the Jizya, the purpose, the purpose is not to kill the Christian, the purpose is the Jizya. He just agreed that his prophet is a scam. Why Muhammad waging war against the Christians? Not because he want them to be Muslims. Not because he is fighting for Allah. This is the message of Abbas. Read it carefully. CP. The objective of 929 is to pay jizya. <laughs> you see it? Not killing or conversion. Then if we go to Ibn, uh, Ibn Kathir or even all other scholars, he accept them? No, he will not accept them. They are potatoes. They try to find a solution. So, okay, let's go to Ibn Kathir. Okay, we will go. Do you like to go Ibn Kathir? Either this guy is a trustworthy or even a Jalalain or even a Bas. Choose one. I don't care. But they are coward hypocrites. And yet they accuse you of lying. And I show them in the front of them in the screen. Show me where it says that. They cannot. 
if you saw to me in the interpretation it says that but in the Quran it doesn't say that that's mean the interpretation is made up this is what he said the same as I said to him yesterday when I spoke about chapter 8 86 verse number 7 he said to me does the verse says man does the verse says the word man I said no I said see it doesn't say man and he started trying to come with his own explanation that the verse is speaking about that the women she is giving birth what the women giving birth the Quran is so clear it says in Arabic that it is a gushing fluid and the baby is not born from a gushing fluid of a woman that a very silly stupid argument trying to defend his Quran and if we go to Ibn Kathir Ibn Kathir explain it but he don't like Ibn Kathir because Ibn Kathir will prove that Muhammad is a donkey this is what Ibn Kathir is saying so why you don't accept Ibn Kathir here you want to accept him there in the verse there it doesn't say free the slave in the verse here it doesn't say man you told me if doesn't as long it doesn't say man it's mean it is no man the verse you give me it doesn't say free that's mean there's no free <laughs> Meaning the sexual fluid coming bursting forth from the man and the women Thus the child is produced from both of them by the permission of Allah Proceeding from the between the backbone and the ribs. So there is a sexual fluid proceeding from these areas The funny Abbas he tried to defend this verse in the Quran because obviously proving Muhammad to be a scam Meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women, which is referring to her chest. The fact is not really her chest, it says the location of the necklace. Proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs, the backbone of the man and ribs of the women. It is a fluid, yellow and thin, fine in texture. The child will not be born except from both of them. But the poor Abbas, you do not know that the one who said that is his prophet, not Ibn Kathir. And this is additional proof that you are a donkey. You try to make it that this is only about the women when you're a prophet he made it clear that this is about the men and the women It is not Ibn Kathir saying that If we go in the hadith We will find tons of hadith about this Do you see it, Abdul? This is not Ibn Kathir. You try to escape the Quran meaning by rejecting Ibn Kathir when you want, by accepting Quran, uh, Ibn Kathir when you like. But look what your Prophet said. Ummu Salama said to Ummu Salim, O Allah Apostle, doesn't, Allah does not re re uh, refrain from saying the truth. Is it a, a must for a woman to take a bath after she got orgasm? The Prophet said, Yes, if she notice a water, i.e., discharge, notice it where to notice it, you have to see it in your vagina. <laughs> this is not inside her body, this is a liquid coming out. And then Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet, who never have orgasm, she said to her husband, What? Does the women even have orgasm? The Prophet said, Yes. Then why does the child resemble the mother? So he starts saying to me, oh, this is from between the backbone. He meant the backbone of the women and the chest of the women. Read carefully in different hadith.
the prophet of Islam as Muslims they call him a prophet he described how the baby resembled the parents all those hadith are the same and based on your prophet fantastic education he claimed that if the women have orgasm first the baby will resemble her if the man have orgasm first the baby will resemble him so when you try to defend the Quran proving Muhammad to be a scam Muhammad he did not help you because Muhammad he cannot keep his mouth shut and he get you busted as you see Muhammad saying clearly that the woman the women water is thick and white and the man water is thin and yellow and from both the water the baby come and this is exactly what chapter 86 verse number 7 saying but you because you are a liar you try to say oh this is only about the women does it say man there no the verse doesn't say man you are right we have to admit the verse doesn't say man but your prophet explain it now what we can do unless you know what the verse mean more than your prophet and here you notice that Muhammad obviously proven himself to be a liar What do you think, Muslims? Any Abdul? Even if Abbas wanna call, he can call. You make me angry, upset. I cannot take it with those liars. Call so we can laugh. Is your prophet a donkey? Or you know the Quran meaning more than him? Do you know more what Allah he meant from Muhammad? So obviously you know more so the hypocrisy of Muslims is beyond imagination the words are not there they add meaning to the words which is not there I don't do that I translate the Quran as it is I read the hadith as it is and I correct even Muslim translation and I challenge Muslims who read Arabic to call me and see with me what I'm talking about and when I challenge you and I say all Muslims in the world call me right now and prove me wrong who speak Arabic specifically my Skype is open any Muslim who speak Arabic he can call me say okay I want to show you the word there which says a free slave it's not there as simple as that I'm not stupid to say that the word is not there and it's there because people will laugh at me <laughs> and the donkey he called me he said don't you see the, do, do, do you see the word there riqab you donkey you just approve that you're a prophet he owns slaves and you Muslims you own slaves why he owns slaves if he's against slavery imagine I am against slavery but I have thousands of them Have you ever heard of a stupidity like this before? If you go right now in the Quran, And we type the word Malakat Aymanakum.
the Quran not only legalize on slaves it's legalizing Arabian slaves captives even captives who they are married in different verse on the Quran it says have sex not with women already married unless they are married slaves do you want me to read for you Ibn Kathir or now Ibn Kathir is poo, poo see when they want Ibn Kathir is good when they want Ibn Kathir is a shameful person we run away from him you cannot have sex with married women And by the way, it doesn't say even marry. Well, marry, how you can marry someone is married. What marry? It says forbidden for you, etc., 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 and forbidden for you, women who they are free. What does that mean? We read the interpretation. It says that the, those are free women, and there is the women who they are married, those are not lawful for you. Unless you do it in the right way. Except, except who? Your right hand process. Do you see it, guys? Do you see it? What is the exception to have sex with? It's forbidden for you this and this and this and this and this long list. And then accept your right hand process, the captive. You Muslims are very good to slaves, but you rape them. The Bible in the Old Testament is speaking about captive, captive of war. You speak about if a man he went to marry a slave, not rape a slave, marry. Here it's just rape. And this is exactly what Muslims did practice for centuries. Anyway, we go back, try something better, Muslims. And by the way, I challenge you, all of you, the Muslims who say I'm lying, to copy my videos and post it in your YouTube, so let all the Muslims see how I'm lying. I want the Muslim to see how I'm lying. It's a challenge to you. And by the way, when Muhammad he speak about what he claim the science of Allah, not only he exposed that he is a false prophet, not only he exposed that Islam is false, he exposed something beyond that. That Muslims today, in the year 2019, they are living in denial of stupidity of their own. How somebody live in 2019 believe in such a garbage we see in the screen? If a Christian prince, he says that the, if the man have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy. And if the women have orgasm first, the baby will be a girl. The Muslim, they will make videos making fun of me and laughing at me. I will become the joke of everybody. But Muhammad saying that, Muslims... That's it. Christian Prince is lying. Do you have an answer for this, Abdul? Or the Quran saying that you are born of a gushing fluid coming from the ribs of the women and the backbone of the man? Or the Quran says that the sperm will turn into a congealed blood. 
which is very stupid and very silly and the Muslim made articles about the science of the Quran the problem is when the Muslim they try to cover up for the stupidity of their Quran they forgot that their prophet already he explained many of those verses of the Quran like this one Muhammad he explained you see the problem is that Muhammad he did not let the Muslims alone with the Quran he explained it and that will get Muhammad and the Muslim busted how we can understand this verse let us see what Muhammad said and this is a Sahih Hadith we will not use something is not accepted by Islam Muhammad is a scientist what we can say read carefully with me brother and sister brothers when the drop of semen remain in the womb for 40 days or 50 days drop of semen drop of semen is in the womb for 40 or 50 days as we know you notice here the Muhammad he did not even know what is the egg there's no egg he imagined that the water in the woman's vagina is what make the baby and the water of the man which is the sperm make the baby so both of them they have a sperm and here Muhammad is explaining the semen a drop of semen a drop of semen remain all of us we knew that one one semen will fertilize the egg what drop of semen drop of semen remains in the womb for 40 days okay hold on hold on I mean Muhammad here he on a very certification in science big one who can deny that Muhammad is doctor now how long the sperm can live Search and Google right now. Answer. Frozen sperm, etc., etc., and then the sperm can live up to up to five days. Muhammad, he only added a zero. For how long the sperm can live inside a woman? Another search. Maximum. Since sperm can only live for a maximum of five days in the female. Five days. Muhammad, he made them 50. Very close. You see, if Muhammad, he says five days, the Muslims, they will make a movie about it. And then look what happened. So now the sperm as a drop inside the women for 50 days. The angel come and say, Oh Lord, good or evil. <laughs> you write your destiny when you are a baby, you know, not, not born yet. But look at this here now. Allah the exalted, the glorious, has appointed an angel as he created of the womb. And he would say, Oh my Lord, it is now a drop of semen. Oh my Lord, now it's a clot of a blood. Oh my Lord, now it's a lump of a flesh. Oh my Lord. This is this is how the baby is created. So, oh my Lord, for 40 or 40 days as a semen oh my lord as a clot for 50 days oh my lord it is a lump as a 40 days and we can show you even the hadith you're a prophet he explained it my friend read carefully in love the messenger of allah the truthful 
the truthful look at the truthful huh? he's truthful and the receiver of the truth informed us saying the creation of the human is gathering in the form of a semen in the womb of your mother for 40 days <laughs> and then he became a blood for 40 days and then he become a lump or a, of a flesh for like that 40 days that's it the baby is created this is the science of your prophet do you like him Nicotia? cowards why you don't call me and say to me obviously my prophet is lying why you don't get Muhammad busted you are coming after a Christian prince because you are saying he did not show the water free when the water free is not even there you coward liar all of this disaster in front of you did not move you all this garbage did not make you go crazy You can call me only if you are a Muslim. Read how many times Muhammad, you repeat the same story. This guy, he cannot keep his mouth shut. Do you see it? The drop of his sperm remained in the womb for 40 nights, then became a blood, and then became a blood the clot, and then a lump of a flesh and then Allah he sent the angels to write the provision do you see it science who is the hero Muslim he will call the prophet and say to him you are a liar this is not a true cowards look at them they will not call Muhammad and say to him you are a liar call him in his grave and by the way Muhammad in his grave now he can hear us if you don't believe me, I can show you the reference. Muhammad, he claimed that even though he is in the grave, all what you say about him is going to be placed for him. He's God. He's in the grave, but he have a job to do. Read it. You can call him. Have you ever heard of a stupid statement like this? This guy, he think he is God. He's saying to the Muslims, your prayer will be placed placed in the front of me. They said to him, but you are going to be in the grave. How the, our prayer will be placed in the front of you? He says, oh, I forgot to tell you, brother, that we are prophet. Our body will not be decayed. Okay, your body will not be decayed. What does that mean? You're alive in the grave. Let us say for the sake of argument that your body is not decay. But how the prayer will be placed in the front of you and you will see them. Unless you are alive. So why you Muslims are not getting upset? If any of you, honest to God, have a simple, a little dust of dignity, you will leave Islam after reading this. And as you see, all of this is Sahih. Which is confirming the Quran. But they have no dignity. They are coward. They defend the lies in front of you. Who of you dare to say that Muhammad is right? The seamen stay in the women's womb for 40 nights. Why? He is going to Las Vegas vacation. He is doing gambling there. 40 nights, Alibaba and the 40 thieves. I mean, your prophet, obviously, he stuck with numbers. 7, 70, 72, 40. And look in this hadith, Muhammad, he even making big boo-boo now. Here he says, 
that the angel he asked Allah the last stage he asked him male or female Allah male or female we make it male or female should I install a penis for him or install a vagina Allah but all of us we knew that the gender is the first thing to be decided already when when the sperm go inside the, the egg it is the first thing to be decided male or female to the point these days in the clinic they can you can choose they can take your sperm and they can separate the one who will make your wife you know deliver a baby boy or a girl so you can decide what do you want according to your prophet the last stage is male or female <laughs> and not only that the angel he asked Allah should I make him have a problem or without a problem so if there is somebody he is born blind the angel he asked Allah should I make him blind Allah or not blind now Why you Muslims are not getting upset? This does not make you upset? <laughs> Do you see the hypocrisy? As long as you are watching my videos closely and trying to find a lie. I mean, all those lies, Christian Prince, he just said in front of you in the screen. Is not enough for you to prove Islam to be a lie? Here we go. I'm saying to you here, what is a lie? Your prophet saying that. What is the Abdul? And the funny you ask the guy do you speak Arabic he said I will not tell you no you do not need to tell me I know you are a donkey I will not tell you brother <laughs> do you know why he chose to say I will not tell you because he knew if he say I speak Arabic I will get him busted so he decided to say I will not tell you because this is the best solution for his lies Do we have any Abdu on a call? Anyone? Let us try to call the guy who accused me of lying, just for fun. What his name was? I think his name was Sarso or something. Let us see. As I remember, his name start with a letter S, Sarso, something like this. Sar, 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 sar. Uh. Oh, this one, I think. Okay. Let us call him. Let us see how brave he is. <laughs> yeah. 
Vence a Sasur. Okay, he will not answer. Let us take another Salsur. Oh, Abbas is not here now. Next Salsur. Hmm. I think this is the kid who always called to we just make a joke, but we will take him for fun. Assalamu alaikum. Gigi, how are you? Hello, you hear me? Yeah, I hear you, Gigi. How are you? What? Go okay. Ahead. What do you want to say? Uh, I wanted to explain uh, the yellow, uh, yellow, yellow fluid. You want to explain the yellow fluid? Yes. Okay. Well, explain to us. Go ahead. So you open, please. Oh, okay. You don't have it in front of you? Uh, I'm on your YouTube. Oh, okay. Okay. Also on the video on Ramazan Gulan the Rubens. You see, we, we said we want to call you Gigi, and I know it's you. I see, can see your IP, you idiot. That's for fun. <laughs> you donkey. You have a very great future, by the way. Yes, Abdul, how are you? I'm good. Call me for. Just for fun. Okay, so did you get did you get, people, did you get upset? Just looking behind them. What? Listen, please. What? If you got on me, something me behind me. Talk to me. If you did, I would you never call answer me. To you. I don't call me. Answers. You call me, and you are don't the one who that. said to me you are a liar. So who is the one insulting you? Aren't you the one who called me in the first? I called the first. In the first. You sentence, didn't want to meet The first sentence you, you said know, to me, you are a liar. You lied. Al Riabi means free in the next. No, it doesn't plane. say that. No, you cannot prove it. If, prove it to me. If, where it says that? You are, here we go. You are a, you are a liar if, again. Okay. Show me where it says a free the next. It says riqab. Riqab means slaves. It says there in the verse, be good to this and this and this. And he mentioned the the, the slaves. It so, doesn't say it doesn't say free the slaves. Are you saying free the orphan too? Are you saying free the poor? Are you saying what is the word free? He is just counting one after one okay. after one. It doesn't say the word free. Now I challenge you to show me the word free. You could not show it. Uh, okay. Uh, now you see how you shift from last time you said to Abbas. There's no slave here. There's no slave here. Now you're saying there is slave, but there's no, no slave. No, no, it see? doesn't say that. You, you see, it, you no, see it, no, we mentioned about the video. free of the you slaves. Said there's no slave here. You don't. No. There's no slave here. You don't. There's see, no slave here. You are a donkey Who again. You are a donkey again. Really. No, you are a donkey. You are a donkey again. We, we, we spoke, and, me. and he called me. The, the, the donkey you're called me after you, and he agreed that it is not there. It is not there. Now listen, 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 listen. Is is the word free there? Or yes or no? But there's no free. Yeah. So Stop lying, brother. Lying is not going to be anywhere. Jesus didn't ask Abdul, you Abdul, 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 no Abdul, 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 you are the liar because you cannot answer I'm me and you cannot refute me. I'm going to show how you went from. You are a coward. Word. You are a coward. Why you don't show me where it says the free the slaves? You call me to show me where it says that. Why you don't show me? Did you tell me that there's no more slave in here? It doesn't right. say no, say it, no, no. I said, don't. Th there's no free the slave there. There's no free the slave. You are a coward. You are a potato. Play the video. I ask you to give me the video. I ask you to give me the video an hour ago. Did you find it? You are a potato like your prophet. I said to him, I said to him, no, where he it says, shut up, you idiot. Either you show me, prove me wrong. It, it doesn't say free the slave. That's what I said to him. And this is why you called me. So you are a certified donkey now. After Give all this, argue, listen, Abdul. After the, all this argument, was you able to show me where it says the free the slave? Yes or no? Al Riqabi 
means free the neck. Uh, no, it doesn't say that. You are a liar. It says, show me the word of free. Coward, you, of you see why I don't want to talk to you? You are a donkey like your prophet. Rikabi meaning free the slave. A rikab mean the one you own them as slaves. And the verse says, be nice to those and those and those. Know where the word of free is. In order to have a free slave, as long as you agree that the word riqab is riqab means the neck, you know. Imagine Muhammad, you speak about riqab, a human being, as if they are necks. You don't speak about them about a, as a human. Necks. Why? Because they are our slaves. We capture them from their necks. We have a leash. Around their necks, free the neck. He is saying to us, He just said to us, Did you hear it? He just said that a riqab mean free the necks. So you just admitted, according to you, that in Islam we put a chain around the neck of people. And if a Muslim he want to free a neck, as he said, the Quran says, freeing a believing neck. And that explains this verse here. And that is a penalty, not as a reward. It's not a reward for the slave, it's a penalty for the Arab guy who did something wrong. There's a couple of stories where a woman, as an example, she uh, she accepted Islam. So he told them to free her, but she he don't own her, by the way. Free her. You don't free from his own. He free from your pocket because she believe he's a prophet. But after that, Muhammad, you don't like the idea because now many people they start saying I'm a Muslim because they want to get their freedom. So still Muhammad, he allowed the Muslims to own a believing slave, like Bilal. A believing slave. The Quran speak about freeing the slaves who they believe in Allah as an option, as, as a must. Not as an act of righteousness, by the way. The option as a penalty. As an example. Let me show you. We showed you one where if you kill the human being by mistake, right? Let me show this donkey who speak about a riqab. Did he say a riqab? A riqab mean free and slave? This is the verse in the front of us. It says, فَتَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةً do you see the word Tahrir, you donkey? In order to free a slave, it have to say the word before it, which is a free. Fatahariru, this is a freeing a slave. Tahriru raqaba. In the case of what? In the case of murder. If a Muslim he kill a Muslim, Muhammad he made it as a penalty for the Arab who love to own black slaves. So if you kill your brother and you claim that this is a mistake or you wanted to cut his uh, his skin only or you were fighting with him but you don't mean to kill him then it says here in Arabic set free a neck set free a neck where is the word set free you see it here in English but you see it here in Arabic in the other verse Muslim translation is false we cannot find the word set free this is the word Arabic, set free. And this is the word, raqaba. Do you see it, you idiot? So it's not enough to say raqaba. Raqaba mean a neck, <clears throat> which means slave. You add before it the word free. And this is mentioned in many verses. As an example, chapter 50, uh, 53, 58, sorry, 
Verse number three. It says the same. Fatahariru Rakaba. You see the word Tahriru, your donkey. You don't say only Rakab alone and that means free it. Fatahariru Rakaba. You set the free. Donkey. Garbage in, garbage out. Chapter 5, verse number 89. The same. Tahriru Rakaba. So in the Quran, wherever the slave will be freed, there's a word that says free in Arabic, not in the interpretation. And here the word Raqaba is the same, Riqab. As you see here, Muhammad, he make it as a penalty. If you take an oath, a false oath, and the Muslim here, they say, unintentional, like, you know, you don't mean it. But the fact, it doesn't say, it's not like uh, something you made my mistake. No, you take an oath, but you don't mean it, which means you are lying in your oath. You take an oath to your wife saying, I'm not going to have sex with this woman anymore. As an example, what happened to Muhammad when he had sex with his wives, slaves, in her bed. He took an oath saying, I swear by Allah, I will not go into if that woman. Muhammad second day or a, day, a week after he made a verse saying, Allah, he said to him, why you made what is lawful for you and lawful? And this is chapter 66, verse number one. And obviously Muhammad is the one who made this verse because there's nowhere in the Quran it says you can have sex with a slave unless she is a captive of war and marry the copt she was not a captive of war she was a gift delivered to him by Amazon delivery Muhammad he accept all kind of slaves not only captives even gifts he opened his door prophet you have a gift we have like 80 people, they are slaves, gift for you. Muhammad, he take them, he never free them. So if you take a false oath, what we will do? Allah will not take you accountable for your false oath. But he take you to your task. Okay, which an oath you decide to do. Now, what if you make an oath and you cannot do? Look at the solution. It's a penalty, not a reward. It is a penalty. So if you swear an oath, which you cannot do, go and feed 10 people from the poor. Or... Read with me carefully. Free a slave. Or, or, fast three days. Or, any of those options. It's a penalty. It's not a reward for the slave. Here, Muhammad is not, he is, he is not being good to the slave. He is making a penalty so he can stop them from taking false oath. But he himself is the first one to take a false oath. And he never free a slave. Here we go, Muhammad, he took an oath, he will never sleep with Mary the Copt, and he never free a slave. So in Islam, freeing a slave was always either as a penalty or as a reward. Reward to who? In certain point, if somebody converted to Islam, because Muhammad, he tried to increase his number, he says, as long as he don't own him, if you own him, you don't free them, usually. I, I don't remember, I see any story. Muhammad, he free his own slave before he convert to Islam. I saw stories of people, they convert to Islam, and then he freed them. And then we saw stories where Muhammad, he makes slaves again, even though their master, they decide to free them. Imagine the master, he want to free them. Muhammad, he refused. And he made them slaves again.
but you notice here with us how the Muslim they lie when they speak about a freeing a slave and by the way when a Muslim speak about we've been ordered to do righteousness if you look here it says feed 10 people okay from the money of who you as a Muslim you will feed 10 people poor people from the money of who in the time of Muhammad they are feeding them from the money of the Christians and the Jews and the Arab which killed and they stole their money so you want to do righteousness from my money how a Muslim he own a slave anyway he captured them Read. Do you see it? Muhammad, he enslaved even children. He killed all the men. Those people, they were not even fighting him. They were busy doing their watering to their animals, feeding their animals. And he attacked them where they are not aware. Read with me carefully. The Prophet had suddenly attacked Bani al-Mustaliq without warning while they were head headless and their cattle were being watered at the place of water. Muhammad is a wolf. Poor people. They are watering their animals. They are fighting men, which means the men who tried to defend. They were killed. And their women and children were taken as captive. Islam is against slavery. We attack a town, we kill all the men, and we take the women and children as slaves. Islam is against slavery. And then what we do? We say, all oh, those women are for you to have sex with them. Or you sell them. And even the Muslims, they start doing business of adultery, prostitution, using the slaves. If you go in the Quran, after the complaint of the increase of the number of prostitution business between Muslims, Muhammad, he had to come with a solution. So he made this verse. He says, Force not your slave girls for prostitution to seek money. Force them not. Okay, what force them not? In Arabic, it says, Don't force them if they want it to preserve their chastity. What if they don't want to preserve their chastity? It's okay. Prostitution is okay in Islam. Only for slave girls. The guy, he owned 30, 40 slave girls. He opened a pimp house. Muhammad saying, force them not. Because the Muslims, they are forcing their slaves to do prostitutions. But if you force them, there's no penalty still. It's just a statement. You force them, you don't force them, it doesn't matter. If you force them, Allah is all merciful. If you don't force them and they agree, that's wonderful too. And they are making money from this. Are we lying? It's in the front of you. And you can read the interpretation. And if one of them forced them, then Allah is all merciful. Where is the why Muhammad don't make a penalty or punishment for those who do prostitution business from the Arab white Arab enslaving the girls to do prostitution? Why don't say if you do that we will cut your head? Why here is all merciful? Why if somebody stole an egg 
from a Muslim we cut his hand but if he steals from a Christian it's okay why somebody if he stole an egg we cut his hand but if he is running a pimp house forcing slave girls we say to him don't force them but if you force them it's okay Allah is all merciful Any Abdul? Who is Abdul would like to call us? Anyone? As you see, the Muslims, they get angry from me when in fact they should be really angry from themselves. Their prophets saying stupid things. It doesn't make them angry. Look at this garbage in front of us. That does not make them angry. Any Abdul? You know, the funny people, they ask me in Skype, how we know that you are alive? Look like nobody heard of something called subscribe. They never heard of such, you know? Any brave, proud Muslim? Is proud about Dr. Muhammad teaching us how the baby is made, or even about slaves. Hmm? By the way, uh, if any of you speak French, uh, will be will be nice if you guys. Uh, tell your friends about my French book because not many people know really about it it's called the secret the prophet Arab so if you know a French speaking people will be a good idea if you tell your friends about it you know usually uh, most of people who watch my videos they are English speaking people so we don't get the opportunity uh, to have a French uh, speaking support so if you speak a French you have a friends please tell them about this book this book is made in fantastic way it is a translation for the deception of Allah which is a treasure of information any Abdul <coughs> The secrets, the Prophet Arab. What a scandal. What a scandal. What a horrible book. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Let us do this. Forget about all the topics we spoke about. Who is the Muslim? He is proud about Islam and he want to show me something to prove to me from his point of view that Islam is from the true God. 
what do you think guys I'm not going to ask you a question you tell me and we will talk about what you tell me how easy that is forget about Muhammad here making poo poo and they're making poo poo I'm, I'm not going you you choose a topic but you promise me the topic you open you stay with it anyone you talk about whatever you want uh, science and the Quran is an example anything I mean if you try your best you choose it or to make it simple for you you call me and ask me to ask you the question which you made you made the question for yourself I will just repeat it and I challenge you to answer the question you asked me to ask you how about that have you ever heard of a challenge like this you ask me to ask you a question and I challenge you to answer the question you asked me to ask you who dare to say so anything about your cult I mean this will be the easiest exam ever imagine you go to school and the teacher he says to you write the question you like and answer it you write you make it and you answer it <laughs> you make it and you answer it what do you want more even this one is hard for you No, they cannot, you know, for me, you see, I don't tolerate, I don't tolerate liars. The, the second I notice somebody is just playing games, he is not being honest, I, I hang up on him. There's no need to talk to him. I'm not going to shout, scream, you know. There's no point. Like the guy who just before, he keep insisting, it says a free to slave. We ask him where he can show us. He don't speak Arabic, he says the word riqab means free to slave. Which is stupid. Any Abdul? Is it true that Aisha uh, would clean the semen from Muhammad clothing? Uh, yes. Aisha. She cleaned the semen because obviously this guy. I mean, what would say? Let's see if we can find the hadith in English. <clears throat> very easy to find the hadith in Arabic but let us see in English how the story will be Uh, until now there is no success uh, let us see now yeah she don't wash it you know she just uh, yeah, no we cannot find the hadith in this website which is very weird by the way because it should be in Sahih Muslim as I remember mm. I'm just trying to find it in this website. 
Here we go. Finally. Do you see it? This is Sahih Muslim, hadith number 290. Did we answer you? And here you will see actually if you read the story you see a guy he was sleeping in the house of Aisha and look like how he was masturbating I mean the guy is a guest in the house of Muhammad and he is masturbating in the house of Muhammad I stayed in the house of Aisha and I had a wet dream <laughs> uh, By the way, it's not a way to dream. Fahtalamtu, which means I, I know I have, uh, you know, he did masturbate. So in the morning, I dripped both the clothes in water. This act of mine was watched by a maid servant of Aisha, and she informed her. See, Aisha, she is poor. The Prophet is a poor man. He have servants. You know, they have slaves. I mean, Muhammad is. Muhammad is against slavery. No. Aisha, she have servants. Okay. All of us, we have servants at home. Don't you have a servant at home? I have 10. But because of a global warming, I decide to make them uh, five. Because they are farting a lot. Um, you know, they are eating beans. Now read. So Aisha, she sent me a message. saying what to promoted your act like this with your clothes he said i told her i told that i saw a dream which a man he sleep see in his sleep you know he's masturbating she said did you find any mark of the fluid in your clothes look at the discussion i said no she said had you found anything you should have washed it In case I found the semen on a garment of the Messenger of Allah, I scrub it off with my nails. They don't wash it, they scrub it. Oh, you don't see the screen? I am sorry, guys. I forgot that this thing is on the screen. All right. Anyway, you did not miss it. You did not miss a lot. We can we can draw this one. Sorry. Do you see it? So the woman he have with a dream. He masturbate, and I she is telling him why you wash it, why you wash it. I I know I scratch it only. This is how we clean the prophet and his wife. We don't wash it, we scratch it. We scrub it off with my nails. Do you see it, Muslims? Call me a liar. Here you go. Liar. I call Aisha a liar. Do you remember, guys, when Dr. Rohi, uh, not Rohi, Dr. Rohi, sorry, the, the, the sheikh, the sheikh from Shiku Shakuka, New York, when I when I showed him the verse about the breast feeding for adult, do you remember what he said? If anyone remember what like uh, in what time of the video, so we can play it. I don't remember what uh, when he said that, but I think it was at the end. When I showed him this hadith, he said, "There is no such a thing. It's called the breast feeding for adult." I said to him, are you accusing Aisha to be a liar? <laughs> Do you remember? There is no such a thing. It's called breastfeeding for adult. I said, here we go. This is Aisha saying, are you saying either you say Aisha is a liar? 
or you apologize and this is what I said to him the, the video is there Yeah, Abbas, Abbas, you are just a little little puppy. Don't even text me again. Let me see if I can find the video. What was his name? Sheikh Abdul Wadud. Okay, Sheikh Abdul Wadud. Okay, let's see here. I think it was at the end of the video. Hello. Hey prophets, how are you doing? Hey my friend. Uh, first I'll tell you you're doing a great, amazing job, and I know you're waiting for Muslim people to call you, but I can't wait to call and share my opinion if you allow me. I called you before. Is it okay to share no my problem. opinion? Go ahead, my friend. Go ahead. Uh, first, uh, to, to you, literally, amazing, amazing job. And to your viewers, uh, whatever the, uh, the Christian prince saying, is 120 percent right uh myself i think the same background the christian prince in the u.s lived in three muslim countries born in muslim countries whatever the prophet saying is correct i'm saying the arabian prophet the the christian prince an amazing job absolutely right and all these clowns muslim clowns and idiots who call try to say no or to play the gymna gymnasium with the word no absolutely right and i speak arabic as well we understand this ugly hate book of the islam called the quran 29 verse absolutely dedicated to slaves what i want to say here if you black by the way i'm dark skin so if you black and you worship Islam and Muhammad, you're absolutely idiot. Because even when the Prophet said a little bit ago, to free a neck, to, you know, they even they don't call slave a neck. To free a neck doesn't mean you're gonna be free. You're gonna be a free Muslim slave, not a free Muslim, a slave. Plus, and the Prophet can approve my word if, uh, if he can. Today, today, now, they don't call the blacks blacks. There's a special word in Islam to call the blacks. Can you say it to Prophet, please? Can I say what? Sorry. The word, what, how they, what they call the blacks in Arab land and Muslim land? Yeah, Abid. Thank you. It's Abid. Way worse than Negro, means slave. Even today, today, 2019. Two weeks ago, I interviewed on my channel uh, a, a, a gentleman from Mauritania next to Morocco on the west coast of North Africa today they have slaves they have families of slaves under Islamic government each family in Mauritania has slaves now the uh, people of Saudi Arabia we all now knew they have slaves now they 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 call it differently but it's 29 verses in, in the Quran calling about the slave. Tahrir raqaba, to free a neck. If, 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 if a Muslim want to do anything, bad deed or bad doing, it's okay. He can free a neck, free, you know, you know, free a man or a woman. My friend, as, By the way, as long as you speak Arabic, as long as you speak Arabic, I don't know if you saw the Muslim speaking about uh, verse 177. Does it say there in Arabic anywhere? free no no i was i was in the gym i was like oh my god i want to call the prince I, you know you know it's 
uh, just amazing how I, they lie. This is the Muslim job. Muslims now are attorneys for Muhammad and the Quran. They play with the word. Oh, that doesn't mean this. Oh, this doesn't mean that. No, it means that exactly. Yeah, so when in the Quran says Abid, means slave. But by the way, if you dark skin, if you if you brown, if you you are idiot to worship Muhammad, because you are less Muslim. Okay, and Muslims idiots. I mean, idiots in general, because they believe in this sick self-proclaimed prophet okay i was livid to hear these guys calling and laughing oh no no it doesn't mean this no it means that exactly and the great thing about uh, christian prince he showed their own books but they cannot deny it. they they have this schizophrenia they can't and that's what freaking west doing now bringing all these idiots muslim to the imagine you bring in idiots infected with Ebola and cholera to your countries. That was Muslims are with all due respect what I believe they are victims, but there's dangerous victim victim with virus of Ebola is dangerous. We need to put them aside But to come and sp spread this disease in the West in America and Europe and Canada We need to stop that yeah, you know, I would love to be with say, you one day if someone told me no, say, or I mean, yeah, hold on, hold on. It's we can, we can, we can say, my friend, my, my friend, my friend, we cannot say we should put the Muslims aside. It's not the problem if somebody is, let us say, somebody is sick with something, it's not his problem. The problem is that if the society is not, uh, you know, uh, they don't have, uh, let us say, uh, let us say there's a flu spread all over. Uh, but uh, you know, agree. people they have to have a flu shot. You know, it's not a, it's not the fault of somebody is is ill with something. So I don't blame the Muslims, by the way. I blame, uh, you know, stupidity of some, and they think Islam is still is a good religion. But the Muslims at the, at the end of the day, and I think you are an ex-Muslim yourself, right? Yeah, I came from there, but really, you know, this is the good thing about it. I never, I never said Shahada, and I never accepted Islam in my life. But yeah, Muslim by crown, bo born yeah. in Iraq. So you are born, born you are born as a Muslim. Okay. So you, yeah, are, yeah. you are born from a Muslim family. So according to Islam, you are a Muslim. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but but we cannot say like imagine we say the same to you because you know there's many Muslim like you who they are Muslim by name. They don't want to be Muslims. So we cannot generalize and say every Muslim. Is uh, a, I agree. Sometimes yeah. I, I am sorry for my word, literally. Yeah. But sometimes at, you know when you go to the doctor, you have disease or something. They want to operate on you. The doctor have to cut your skin and go in to correct the problem i understand the point i really apologize for that but at least give i mean to our muslim uh, viewers or listeners at least review what you taught what you've been taught go look at the book now when you show them this is i'm talking about exactly the disease here when you show them from their own book and he laughs and he tells you a liar this is doesn't mean that this is the sick one i mean exactly and they are the most dangerous because they see it they realize it they know it but they have this schizophrenia disease and by the way uh i i, I when i said sorry that's seriously there are people who want to get out of that so they need more proofs and that's what i always say you're doing a great job you've shown them from their own books but i still believe yes they are victim they have they have been invict infect infected that doesn't mean give them excuse. They need, this is the 21st century. Uh, phones has internet. You, uh, back in the days, they go to the sheikh or imam to give them the wrong info. Now, uh, Imam Google and Hajj uh, YouTube can give them another answer. So instead of lying and debating the prophet, why don't you just check it with your own Google and see the truth? Yeah. Anyway, thank, my you, friend, sir. thank you very much for calling. I really appreciate your call. And, thank thank uh, you so much. And please stay the hell away from Islam. Thank you so much. I, I would love for you one day to be with us if we have your interview, if you don't mind. Yeah, you know, I many people they asked me to do interview, and I said, if I accept one, I have to accept the rest. And there is too many. And that's why I'm saying <laughs> I know, I know. I'm saying no because uh, then they will be offended. You know what I mean?
They will say, well, well, I, 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 I agree, yeah. agree, agree, agree. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, all you're right. right. Thank you, my friend. But you, anyway, you're doing a great job. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you so much. Thank you for calling. Take care. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Yeah, you know, always, you know, think about the Muslims. We as a Christians, I don't know if what he is, I don't, I don't think he's a Christian. For us as a Christian, we think about Muslims in a different way. We think about them that they are people who need our help. Like I scream at them, I shout, you know, I get angry. But I will, we will never hate them and we will not consider them, uh, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, they are uh, God made and they are human like us and they need, they need, uh, they need help and as anyone need help so we don't cast the stones we cannot cast the stones at them because this is not a Christian act uh, we can cast the stones at the devil and his teaching and that's what we do when I what I do here I'm not talking about Muslims and I will not because Muslims are you know people like us you know if I'm born of a Muslim family and nobody told me I will be the same as this Abbas a foolish man you, you, you keep showing him Statement after statement proof after proof and still he is acting like a donkey. Well, what I can do you want to stay as a donkey? It's up to you, but I cannot say that Abbas is a bad person. I can say he's lying to himself. Yes But I cannot judge him really Now people they are saying my voice is low. Is that right? Is my voice is low guys How is my voice for you is it uh, is it down? Is good okay. No, Abbas is a liar. Abbas is certified liar. We prove it all over, but doesn't mean he is a negative person. You see, lying, and he know he's lying. It is a way of denial of how stupid to be a Muslim. So what he do? He start lying to himself. He's not lying to me. The same as the caller. We show him the verse. We say to him, "Where it says a free a slave? Show it to us." He keeps shouting and screaming. Okay, show it to me. You call me to prove me wrong. And then he says the word "riqab." The word "riqab" mean neck. It doesn't mean free anything. Where is the word "free"? The verse says, To do what is right supposedly speaking about them as they are money and a good person he like you know those who they are his family and the orphan and the uh, uh, the poor and the one who is like uh, traveling you know he help him and those who they are begging for money and the next and next not free in the next this is a verse speaking about to be good to those people. But was Muhammad good? Was the Muslims good to the slaves? How you can be good to them? Umar al-Khattab, he was beating a woman who is a slave just because she covered her hair. And he said to her, are you trying to act like as a free woman? Are you trying to close yourself as a free woman? Just for covering her hair, he did beat her. And this is the best of the Muslims. So they can say to you things, but is, is it true or not? Here we prove it. They can claim as much as they want. I don't hate Muslims. I will never hate them. And they can, you know, do as they best they can. They want to spread Islam. You know, Islam is dying. Islam for me is dead long time ago. Building mosque here and there, that will not make Islam is really spreading. Islam is the opposite. We just saw in Europe how Muslim now they are having gay Muslims mosque now what happened an imam she is a woman Muhammad he said it clearly a woman she cannot be not only she cannot be a leader of a prayer she can't be anything she can't be a leader of a house
what Muhammad is about that so what is of Islam today is a different it's a new version of Islam is not really exist and tons and tons of sect and remember Muhammad himself he said it's not like in Christianity in Christianity you can be a Protestant you can be a Catholic you can be an Orthodox still you are a Christian because at the end of the day it's what Jesus said not what the priest said the Lord he says whoever believe in me and I will live Muhammad he said that my nation will be 73 sect one of them only will go to heaven so in Islam it's confirmed according to Muhammad if you are not following the right sect you are going to go to hell So which one of them is the one who will take you to heaven? According to Muhammad, the, the, the sect will take you to heaven is the lowest one, the smallest one. So it cannot be the Sunni. It cannot be the Shia. It cannot be even the Druze. It cannot be the Ahmadiyya. It has to be something very small. Which one? In Christianity, there is no such a thing. Not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So the condition is very simple, to do his will, not to be following a sect. And since when following a sect will make you a believer or something, or you will be, make you right, because following a sect, I can be a person, let us say, uh, let us say, assume that the Sunni sect is the correct sect in Islam. That's mean everyone is a Sunni, will go to heaven. And that is really stupid. Same time, all of the, this argument Muhammad is making here that his nation will be 73 sect, showing us that Islam is the most divided religion. According to Muhammad, the Jews will be 71, 72. The Christians, they will be 71, 72 sect. The Muslim, they will be 73. Which is absolutely false too. I mean, what 72, 73? The Muslims are thousands of sects. And if we want to talk about Christian Christianity, we, we can, you know, uh, if we name uh, like uh, groups as sect, if we name them this way, I mean, we can find endless. So this is a false prophecy. What is a seventy-three sect of Islam? Right now we have seventy-three. We have thousands of sects. The Muslim Sunni alone is four sect. The Shia is tons of sects. And actually, even when we say the Muslim Sunni are four, we are talking about four major, but still there's tons of sects we don't count. And not to forget to mention that Muhammad, he made it clear that it doesn't matter really what you believe, which is a contradiction for the story here. Muhammad, he made it clear that uh, what Allah, he wrote for you, Is going to take over. Not what your sect is. Not even your belief. It's not even being a Christian or a Jew. This is Sahir Bukhari, and no Muslim dare to say this is a lie. Read carefully and love. It doesn't matter really what you believe in. Muhammad he said. And he is taking oath. And by Allah, a person among you may do the deeds of the people of fire till there is one cubit, only one cubit, or an arm of breathe distance between him and the fire. But then that written which Allah he ordered to write, the angel to write, proceed. And he does the deeds of the people of paradise and he enter it <laughs> what a drama so it is not you it is what allah he wrote for you before he created you are doing the deeds of heaven or hell doesn't matter here we go the guy here is doing the deed of hellfire the guy he spent his life doing the deeds of hellfire 
and then what is written by Allah will take over proceed and he go to heaven and vice versa a man may do the deeds of the people of paradise till there is only one cupid or two between him and paradise the guy he's praying to Allah doing jihad he joined ISIS he have sex with the children as the prophet he told us to do all the crimes of a humanity against a humanity we did it and now almost I'm going to paradise to get to get the 70 vagina 72 vagina and bingo suddenly almost there's only two meters between me and the heaven and then what Allah written proceed and he does the deeds of people of fire and he all go to fire <laughs> have you ever heard of a stupid cult like this before I challenge any Muslim to show me how stupid that can be more than this so why you pray why you fast why you go and do Hajj why you do jihad why you say Shahada it's what written by Allah will proceed anyway do you see it Muslims Abdul, do you see it? What the point of converting to Islam? What the point of praying to Allah? What the point of going to Hajj? What a, what all the point is about if what is written by Allah will proceed? Who is the stupid here? You, your God, your Muhammad, who? There's no point of this cult and there's no point of you know believing in anything then being an atheist may be the best choice according to this because you can be an atheist doing whatever you wish in life and then what is written by Allah will take over why you need to worry about anything it's based on your luck if you're lucky and Allah he decide to send you before he created you to heaven you go to heaven that's it it's already it's already ordained. How silly, how stupid this cult is. Any Muslim have something to say? If you are a Muslim, please be honest and tell me, don't you agree that this is a stupid? So you do the work of paradise all your life and then what is written by Allah will take over and you go to hell Where is justice? And while you are lying to us saying do jihad Allah will give you versions Pray to Allah if you say the word would do it 100 time Allah forgive you he, he he take you to paradise So all those lies was for what? And not only this, you remember when we, you know, we played just yesterday, the guy, the Abdul, who said that Allah, he wanted to find a victim. He wanted a victim. Adam was a victim. So Allah wanted to be known. And this is why he made Adam a victim. What does that mean? Muslims believe that Adam, he did not commit sin. In which way? In the way is that Allah is the one who wrote for him his sin. It was a fate. Adam was a victim. Victim of who? Of the devil? No. Of Allah. According to Muhammad, and the one is talking here is Muhammad, not me. So don't don't solemnly say you're a liar as usual, huh? The Prophet said Adam and Moses argued. I don't know how Adam and Moses they met each other anyway. I thought both are dead. Let it go. Moses, he said to Adam, O oh Adam, you are our father who disappointed us and turned out of paradise. Turned us out of paradise. So, so Moses, he believed that because of Adam, we are out of paradise. Okay, look like Moses. He believed in Christianity. He's not a Muslim as Muslims they claim. 
because this is not Islamic belief here we go Moses is dead yet he believe in what the Muslim call a wrong belief in the original sin that's what the Muslim says but as you see Moses here he agreed with the Christians not with the Muslims and then Adam he answered him saying to him oh Moses Allah flavored you or favored you sorry with his talk and he wrote the Torah for you with his hands do you blame me for action which Allah had written in my faith 40 years before my creation do you blame me and then Muhammad he said so Adam confuted Moses Adam confuted Moses and he repeat that three times as usual Trinity guy I mean can't you say he confuted Adam uh, Moses once no he have to repeat three times so according to Muhammad you cannot blame Adam for the sin for this is a sin Allah he wrote for him to do do you see it am I making things up is that my story no the sin of Adam is not the sin of Adam it turned to be the sin of Allah and that is a proven that the holy story in the Quran about shaitan he whispered to them it was the plan of Allah Allah he used shaitan to whisper to Adam so Adam will be deceived because he wrote his fate even the Quran confirmed that if we go in the Quran it says the following <clears throat> Read and love. The Quran confirm in many verses, many chapters. Allah speaking to Shaitan, and Shaitan he answered Allah. He said to him. Because you have sent me astray, verily I will shall lurk in ambush for them who they are in the right path. Allah is the one who sent shaitan astray. The word here is not really a correct translation. It says awaitani. Awaitani can be translated more accurately if we say you should use me. Uh, you fool me or you you know like you know it's it's about temptation but in in an evil way if you change the translator let us see this is big tad let us uh, try another liar look at this liar here because you had thrown me out it doesn't say that change the translator throw me out I mean look at this look at their lies I mean their lies is really beyond imagination look at this girl and though has caused me to remain disappointed what remain disappointed what the heck <laughs> look look how the different the translation for the same sentence I mean they are not even in match not even close what disappointed because you made me go astray it doesn't say that however when you say you made me go astray you just say that Allah is the one who made shaitan go astray so even shaitan in this translation confirmed to be a victim look at this translation one after one let us see this one Because you send me astray. Hmm. I mean, who's left? Ahmad Raza Khan? Let us see Ahmad Raza Khan. Send me astray too. No, this is not right. It should be, you know, seduce me, tempt me in an evil way. Like seduce me. 
من الصين أربري Now for the pervert for, for the pervert perverting me the guys what perverting me mean is that is that coming from the word pervert shaitan saying to Allah you made me pervert is that what the translation is saying is that what translation is saying that Allah he made shaitan pervert <laughs> see <laughs> Here is getting more closer. Let us see. Let us see. Maybe we can find get, find something else. So Allah, He made Shaitan a pervert. You know, He's a, He's a victim. Uh, Shaitan saying that to Allah. Did Allah say to him, No, I did not. No, I agree. Here we go. Look at this one. He said, Because thou hast seduced me. Do you see it, Muslims? Do you see it? Shaitan saying to Allah, you seduce me, and that explained in this hadith. Because Shaitan supposedly is the one who spoke to Adam and Eve. But as you see, Adam explained, you cannot blame me for what happened. Because Allah, he ordained that for me 40 years before my creation. Read, this is a different story. Adam he said to him to Moses do you blame me for doing the deeds which Allah had decreed that I should do 40 years before my creation and Muhammad he agreed that Adam was right and Moses was wrong right about what that Adam we cannot blame him for the sin Allah he decreed that sin for him So as you see, Shaitan is just an employee for Allah, seduced by Allah to do a job. Shaitan and Adam and you and me, according to Islam, Allah, he wrote for us a decree to do. He should do, as you see. Do you blame me? Do you blame me for doing a deed which Allah had decreed? That I should, I should, there's no choice. I should do 40 years before he created me. So what the point of this cult? Adam's sin is not Adam's sin, it is Allah playing games. Your sin, my sin is not our sin, it's Allah, he decreed for us playing with our sin. The reason right now I am opening this program and speaking against Allah because he wrote, Christian prince in the day of etc, he would do etc. That's what it says. 40 years before I am created, Allah, he said, he decreed that the Christian prince in March 2019, he will open his program in YouTube and he will speak against me and he will spank the Muslims left and right. Have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? Uh, look at this guy Akram Akram he is using a very filthy language which is from the Quran I wish you did not block him yet so I can post uh, his uh, his statement in the text I wanted to show uh, I think uh, YouTube they uh, deleted his message he was saying Christianity is effed up because they believe in Jesus as God. Will believing in Jesus and God. Let us say this is wrong. You believe in this garbage. Is it wrong? Jesus, believing in Jesus as God, as you claim. Did you ask yourself that even that one, according to this, is based on Allah deception? According to Allah, every sin you do is decreed for you. So if the Christians believe in Jesus as God, this is what Allah He decide. So who is the one is a stupid here? Guys, do you understand what I'm saying? As long he is saying 
that the Christians are stupid and he is using the F word because they believe in Jesus as God. Okay, uh, but as long you Muslim believe that Allah He wrote our destiny, what we will believe and what what we will not believe before He created us. So according to your stupid cult, Allah decide what we should believe in Jesus as God. So who is a stupid here? <laughs> Stupid. I mean, those people they don't want even to use their brain. Like the guy one day, he uh, he said to me, "If Jesus is really the son of the God, then his father will save him." I said, "Okay, that's wonderful." But according to Islam, Jesus was saved by his father. <laughs> Stupid! How you say to me if Jesus really the Son of God, then His Father should save him, and you must then believe that Jesus was saved. They don't use their brain. Even a child who is born and he dies second day, according to Muhammad, he might go to hell. Why? Because Allah He wrote His destiny before He is created. It doesn't matter you do sin or not. Do you see it? Aisha, she thought that this child who they attend his funeral, he is just a little baby, infant. And she confirmed saying, Allah Messenger, there is a happiness for this child who is a bird from the birds of paradise, for it commit no sin, nor has reached the age when one can commit sin. He said, Aisha, peradventure, it may be the otherwise. Because Allah created for paradise those who they are fit for it while they were in their father backbone, and He created for hell those who they are fit for it when they are in their father backbone. So a child who did not commit sin yet he might go to hell. He's a child. He's a baby. Not only a child. He did not reach the age he commits sin, as even Aisha confirmed. She think Aisha that he is going to be a bird from the birds of paradise, for it commit no sin, nor has reached the age when someone can commit sin. So, what is the reason to go to hell? It's not because you commit sin or not. So you're upset from a Christianity. But the fact you should upset from Allah because according to this if the Christians are wrong It's Allah who made them wrong before I was born as a baby Allah decided to make me Christian Who is the stupid here? Hmm? Any Muslim have something to say? Yeah, please don't forget to give to give a like for the video. As you see, the Muslims they are trying to fight our videos, so they give them this like and even they report them. But it doesn't work, by the way, because of my videos, people they download them right away and they are all over the internet. It's not only in my channel, my video. By the end of the night, you will find my videos at least in 30, 40, 50 channels. And then people, they start copying, copying, copying. So good luck trying to fight us. Any Muslim have an answer? A baby, he will go to hell. Why? Adam, he is not a sinner. Why? Adam was a victim of Allah. Why? Shaitan was a victim of Allah. Why? So look what 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 we discover here that the major problem in earth is not Shaitan. It's Allah. Allah is the biggest Shaitan. The problem is not really Shaitan. Shaitan is just a poor guy, according to Islam. Allah, He seduced him, He tempted him, and He made him. 
and he forced him into sin shaitan is just doing what Allah told him to do anyone Well, look like we are almost done hey guys here it's really cold and the degree outside is minus 24 you believe it minus 24 in marsh I mean is that fair <laughs> he Allah why you don't send me oh, Allah why you don't give me an opportunity to buy a corner lot in the heaven of Allah in Hawaii Allah I mean look at this minus 22 22 it was 22 now it's what now it's minus 25 unbelievable oh What freezing? It's minus freezing. Minus, minus. I'm not talking about minus, minus. I'm talking about centigrade, centigrade, not Fahrenheit. This year we, we this year we reached minus thirty-four. In some places, minus forty something. And, and I don't even I don't live in Alaska. What will happen if I live in Alaska? <laughs> Well, if this is not the North Pole, what is the North Pole then? <laughs> you know, every day when I wake up, the first thing I do, I open all the windows. I refresh the air of the house. It doesn't matter really how cold it is. Today, I could not open the windows and the door for more than three minutes. It was really horrible. I mean, the, the air is like a sword. Oh boy. Anyway, I hope in the future I will be able to uh, to move out of here to somewhere it's warmer. Do we have any Abdul? Minus thirty. Uh, somebody have minus thirty. That's good. Here we go. I don't feel I don't feel alone now. Yeah, and we have a global warming, you know. A global warming. A lot of a global warming. And by the way, even a global warming is explained by the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. In case you do not know, I will show you. I mean the prophet he knew everything according to the prophet that each time the, the shaitan he hear the prayers of the Muslims he turned his back and he break farting he fought you know in, in, in English they are saying break wind it's a fact it doesn't say wind it says fart literally so maybe the same but the, like break wind is like a, more polite but the fact in Arabic it says durat. so each time Shaitan, he hear the prayer of Allah, he start fighting. And do you know how many shaitan we have? And now you, if you, if you think about it, Shaitan, he lay eggs every day, 10 eggs. And from every egg, there is 70 male shaitan and female shaitan, which means the shaitan is a lot more, you know, fast in production from a human being. You know, every day, every day, Every one of them, he gives 70 male and female shaitan come from every uh, egg. Every egg, 10 eggs. Every egg have 70 shaitan and shaitana, which means male and female. And then those who they are just come from the egg, they start having sex too and have, having babies. So imagine how many shaitan we have according to Muhammad. And now 
you say Allahu Akbar, shaitan he start farting. And if this is not a global warming, you tell me what is a global warming. You know, methanol is the big problem. And that explain why around the Kaaba there is two guards. They have a spray in their hand. They keep spraying. The smell is so bad. Shaitan is farting there. It's not a Muslim farting. No way. The Muslim will never fart around the Kaaba. It is Shaitan. And by the way, this is proven scientifically. Shaitan he fought a lot, especially in Muslim countries. In, in Christian countries, he don't fart because he's not bothered. Nobody's saying Allah. And that explains why Islamic countries they have this as bad smell, and in the Christian countries they don't have this smell. Not because the Christians are cleaner, no, but because Shaitan is not farting there. We have a guy, his name is Akram. He's saying we worship in the fake Jesus. Are you worshiping the true Allah? Who each time we say his name, somebody fart? Based on your prophet statement here, there's a connection between farting and the name of Allah. You say Allah, someone fart. I mean, how beautiful and eternal the relationship between the name of Allah and farting. And don't be upset from me, your prophet saying that. You say Allah, shaitan fart. You say Jesus, shaitan is not farting. This is what your prophet saying. Look like shaitan is paying respect to Allah in his own way. Do you like to call me Akram and explain to us why shaitan he fought? Is that the way shaitan and his family they pay respect to Allah? Is that an act of worship? Is shaitan striking? Shaitan he fought because he don't want to hear Allahu Akbar. I mean, this is amazing how big, how strong the shaitan fart is. Muslim, they have speakers in the Middle East. Shaitan will burn his ass farting, and they keep saying Allahu Akbar for more than 20 minutes. <clears throat> Are you there, Akram? Akram, I want you to call me right now and say Allahu Akbar in the mic. And I want you to use a sensitive microphone next to you so we can hear shaitan farting. Have you ever heard shaitan farting when you say Allahu Akbar Akram? Be honest with me. You are now in your room. I want you to do this experiment. You say Allahu Akbar. And you tell us life about how and what you smell. Maybe you cannot hear it, but at least you can smell it. Do we have any Abdul? Any Abdul? You know, actually, when I got my degree in Islamic law, I called my dad to tell him, I finally, today, I graduated. He says to me, yeah, he got the degree in farting. At that time, I was really upset. Like, I mean, I spent all those years studying, and now my dad, instead of being happy, he says to me, yeah, right, you get a degree in farting. I was really upset. But then, by time, I, I understand. He's right. I got a degree in farting. Look at this. What we learn from Islam? The science of fart. There's thousands of hadith about farting. Am I lying? How are you, Rizwan? There is one. Do you like to call us and, and, and fart life on air? My uncle said, the prophet said, one should not leave his prayer unless he hears the sound and the smell of the farting. Look, they say something. What's something? 
Read this one. This one is nicer, more beautiful. It's it's, it's more rom romantic. Do you see it? A brother, if you fart, the prophet said, you do not leave the prayer unless you hear it and you smell it like... <laughs> if you hear it only and you don't smell it, it's okay. You continue, brother. Science. I mean, that's that's prophethood. Imagine if a guy he is in a, in the front of you, and you know how the Muslim they pray in ranks, and they bow down, and which means your head will be in the ass of somebody. And now he fought. He did not hear it, but you hear it and you smell it. So what we would do now? Who will leave? <laughs> How romantic. Allah Messenger, S-A-W-F-M-O-O-O-W-S Toyota said, if any one of you feels disturbance on his stomach and doubt whether he has released some wind. I mean, look at the translation, how stupid it is. In Arabic, it says if somebody, he feels something, sound coming from his stomach and he farted. What? Uh, uh, come on. Some wind? What wind? Release some wind? This is not wind. Then he should not leave the mosque unless he hear the sound or smell it. So if it's a mute fart, brother, stay. If it is a fart, have a sound, but you did not smell it, it's okay. How he will smell it anyway? It's in his back. The one who is behind him will smell it. And here you see there's astonishing knowledge of the prophet how the prophet he knew all those things and look how many hadith man all of it is about farting i can make a book about farting i actually i got an idea to to make a new book it says how to fart according to islam the rule of farting actually there's a book it's about that there's a book about the rule. There's a guy, he have a master's degree and he's preparing for his PhD from from, from uh, Al-Azhar University, I think, or Saudi Arabia University, I forgot, I saw the article. And the whole master's degree and his PhD is about 14. I'm not joking. The whole study is about 14. Actually, I think his, uh, his master's degree is already published online. I don't, I'm trying to remember what, what was the name of it. Yeah, I, I, I need to find the name. But I remember, actually there's a video about it too. I'm searching. Here we go. <laughs> this is the Twitter. This is Twitter. Dawa, guys. The one who made the thing, his name is Abdullah Rashid. Invitation to attend a magister, like a master degree, in the Imam University. This is in Mecca. And what the topic is about the Sharia law of the sound coming from the human, which means farting. And this is the official, you know, uh, university invitation. Do you see it?
master degree about farting according to Islam brother and now if you open his book this guy who he made the master degree I don't know how old this one is oh this is 2012 something like that you see August August 2012 by, by now he have a PhD in farting <laughs> I mean Islam is fantastic my friend have you ever heard of religion they have studies and branches of studies about farting according to Sharia law If I don't show it, they will say he's lying. I will go and I will register in the Imam University in Saudi Arabia to get a degree in bullshit. Excuse my language. I get a PhD in bullshit. And then after I finish bullshit, I start bullshitting according to Islam. And then after I start doing bullshitting, you know, and then I open a school. It's called bullshit for the sake of Allah. And you can imagine how many Muslims will register, starting from Abbas and Akram. Akram, I will give you uh, two two seminar for free. You don't need to pay for the first two seminars. Are for free. Actually, you would do great there. I can tell what what kind of a person you are. Take care, Akram. Take Akram. Say, say hi to daddy. I mean, I don't know what to say. People, they think that this is a religion. I believe that this is a stupid cult. And the Muslim, they try to defend it, but there's nobody can defend. Uh, CB, big question, answer me. Yes, Razwan. What do you want, Razwan? Guys, Razwan, he have a question for me. Big question. Yes, Razwan. There is one we are waiting for your big please don't give us a small question because as you see we are talking about farting why you don't come out in public if you know the truth my friend i will go with you with your uh, uh, statement just to show you how stupid you are are we now in public or we are not i mean if youtube is not public what is public if YouTube is not public, what is public? I have 1,000 people listening to me. By the end of the day, maybe 30, 40, 50,000 people copying my videos. If this is not public, what is public? Secondly, Razwan, why Allah don't come in public? Not even in YouTube he come. According to your Quran, Allah, he never spoke to anyone except he, he were in burqa. And this is the verse. Hey, everybody is my witness are you insulting your God saying that he is not saying the truth guys does it say that Allah never spoke to anyone unless by revelation or from behind the veil are you there mr. bigger question Your Allah, he never speak unless he is wearing a burqa. Razwan, are you, are you accusing your Allah to be a liar? He never come in public, never. Not even for Muhammad. Why Muhammad did not say to Allah, at least talk to me once? So what do you say, Abdul? We will only will see Allah after death? Okay. Do you know how you will see Allah after death, Radwan? Radwan, is it true that Allah will come to you in the shape of a shin? True or a lie, Radwan? What do you think, guys? I'm lying or I'm telling the truth? Allah will come to the Muslims in the shape of a shin. 
What do you say, Ridwan? Alhamdulillah. What kind of God you have, Ridwan? Look what Allah He says. According to your cult, Allah will come to you in a shape nearest to the one you know, and you Muslims will kick his ass and you will say to him, We do not know you get lost. What do you say, Radwan? And Allah will come to you in a shape of a shin. I like shin, by the way. I have no problem with shin. Hey, Abdul, you see the problem with Muslims, this is why they hate me very much. When they come with a topic, they cannot maintain themselves with it because we get them busted immediately. According to your prophet, all those hadith is speaking about Allah, he have many shape. And how you recognize him? He recognize him by the shin. The God of Islam will be recognized by his shin. He will strip. And you Abdul? See, all those stories saying the same. Muslims will see Allah in the judgment day and He will come to them in many shapes and then He will come to them in the final shape which is a shin. I like that. I always wanted to see Allah as a shin. It's my wish. Do we have any Muslim here? Someone asking if he can call. Okay. Hello? Hello? Okay. Do you hear me, my friend? <coughs> He's calling the Sheikh from Nigeria. Remember the stars? Hello? Hey, my friend. How are you? Ah yeah yeah uh, thank you very much. Do you um, have do you have the shake the stars from Nigeria with you or what? <laughs> no, it's still there. I, I think it makes sometimes it makes sure on you man like like in refuting. Um, uh, sometimes when you do show, you put your name there. I'm refuting the uh, Christian prince. You know, uh, I think you always have the show on every Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday. He put my <laughs> he put my name there for what? He is he see me in yeah. his dreams now. <laughs> yeah, like uh, when he's doing some show, like you have to put your name, like you know that, like it's replying to what we're saying. <laughs> mm, why you don't call me so we can laugh together and reply? Let's see how we can reply. <laughs> Isn't it him when he spoke to me? He said to me, "I do not know." <laughs> now he knows. How come when he called me the ustaz, he said he do not know? Uh, you know, you know, and m m most of the things they don't really know. Most of the day they don't know, you know. Uh, yeah, but but the problem, uh, this guy, he claimed to be Ustaz. I mean, he claimed to be a sheikh. And then when we ask him a question, he said, I do not know. I mean, how funny it is. You are the one who is teaching them, but you do not know. Oh, they don't really know themselves. 
<laughs> yeah, but how how the Muslims accept him to be uh, to be their teacher? If the teacher no, do not know, what about the follower? The blind leading the blind. That is it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. And uh, the only thing I just want to say, um, uh, thank you very much um, for your work and what you are doing. We really been blessed to you, especially you are giving us knowledge. But uh, I noticed one thing. Uh, it's just a suggestion. I should have said this maybe. Um, to you, maybe not on when you're on life. Um, I see that you are teaching every one of us, whether Christian or Muslim, uh, you are passing knowledge to us, you are building us to be able to have understanding of this uh, Islam. Uh, but I noticed one thing is that uh, maybe I'm just saying as a suggestion, like uh, like a Christian, Muslim Christian have a question um, maybe when they encounter with those, you know, they have in their experience, they want to have, ask a question. Maybe you should have a time that you tell us that the line is open for Christian to call you or anybody to call you. So the question can be answered. Whatever any question anyone asks, have in their mind on Islam, uh, they can they can able to ask you. Because I noticed that uh, truly you you pick calls but no i i see that most christians are now silent now because uh, of the rules whether you can have a time maybe you can tell us now it's time to call the line is open or i know some days you do some lecture that you don't want nobody to call and sometimes you open the line that so we can have time so anything that we have in our various activities so that we encounter so we can ask the question and have more knowledge on this so that's what i noticed maybe at one point in time maybe you can tell us like the line is open for everybody to call now all right to have well, a sensible question okay well because of your request from now on maybe the first 15 20 minutes after we do like uh, open the topic we take first christian questions and then you know we open it only for muslims are you happy yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, you can do it at any time. Whether whether you fill me with the Muslim and they say now nah, the line is yeah, open. The now. reason I say Muslims call me because I want the Christian to see how the Muslims they debate, so they can learn how to debate them, how to talk to them, how to refute them, and I want the Muslim to same time to get the answers which they are looking for. So, uh, debating a Muslim is a benefit, double benefit for both. Uh, answering just a Christian, still even a Christian he might listen. Okay, but maybe this is what the Muslim says. So, you know, having a Muslim talking is like uh, hearing the other side of the story. And people, they can be the judge. It, it, yeah, it, 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 I understand that. Like, you know, like you know, like me or so other people have some uh, debate with some Muslim and they have question that uh, they, you know, like the clarity can only come when maybe they talk to you about it so you can give them more knowledge how to do it. That's what I'm saying. Like, like okay, maybe sometimes what, what we encounter and like uh, what we experience so to talk to you about it so you can give us more knowledge so we can be able to have more knowledge on this. Yeah, but uh, if, you, if you notice, like always really um, what I'm doing here, I'm just, uh, I'm not just a person who opened uh, YouTube and keep talking. I'm reading the chat, answering people from the chat. So it's like, it's like they are with me in the chat, right? You know, yes, yes. When people, they say something. I'm not isolating myself from the Christians, no. Uh, but uh, always I favor a Muslim to call uh, because it gives more benefit. I know, I know. That's that's very excellent. It's I, like, I, it's I, like yeah, practicing excellent. the medicine. I, I support that. I support that. Practicing I, the medicine in the hospital, not in the school. You know what I mean? I, I support that. I support that. Yeah. I, I, another question I have uh, again for you. Then. Uh, when I listen to you and I I see um, when you talking, um, you are sharing the Quran. What I don't really understand that I want you to give a little more knowledge. Are you preaching? what Islam is says or you are preaching your own because where, where is the argument because if you are preaching uh what the really Quran says there should not be argument on this because you are just telling us what you see that or you are preaching your own which one are you preaching what Islam is says or you are preaching your own because no, you're not, you're I'm trying notice, to see why the argument yeah and you notice when I uh, show things I give my own translation and what the Muslim they say, which means there's there's two in the in the stage, me explaining the things and in my own way, 
and what the Muslim they say or even when they try to lie in the translation as an example so I present all the cases my case their case and their lies <laughs> and then we, we try to uh, figure out what is the right one you know and for sure people they can Muslim they can reject what I'm saying uh, but they can reject at least what it says in the front of us on the screen this is what they are saying not me no. Okay, there's so, no be argument so I because present, you're just saying what yeah, they're I, I present, I, I present all the cases because I cannot just uh, say, okay, the Quran says that, and does not give or do, do not give my explanation, not only the Muslim explanation. So always, when I give my explanation, I support it with Islamic source, not only a statement from me. Okay. No. So, so you are preaching from their source to them. Yeah, like, the like today, I don't know if you are with us from the beginning. As an example, we spoke about Muhammad trying to commit suicide, right? Yes. The yes. story is in the front of us, it's plain, saying Muhammad tried many times to commit suicide. But then I made a drawing, and this is my case. No, but I'm still my drawing is explained based in what it says, not my own fabrication, right? So yes. when I make it in my way, I just give it more easy understanding to show how silly, how stupid it is. Not, not to create a new Islam, you know. I don't say something does not exist. So there should not be the only thing that they are, when they call the only thing you have to do is just look into their source. That's it, because you are showing us you, you their see, the Muslims. The, the, the problem is, uh, a Muslim he's trying to defend it. Doesn't matter what you say, he will accuse you to be a liar. That's always you need to prepare for it. Doesn't matter, even if you say something good about Islam, he will say you are a liar because now in their head. This guy is a Christian prince. He is an enemy to Allah. So a Muslim, he speak to you. He is not trying to call to say the truth. He called to defend rather than to tell what it's really there. Like here, when we speak about uh, uh, freeing a slave, we ask him, where is the word to free the slave? He cannot find it. He says, Riqab, Riqab means a neck. doesn't say anything. So they try their best to defend but always they face a failure for a very simple reason we always support what we say or what we state with statement of Muhammad an act of Muhammad and teaching of the Quran and then people they can get the conclusion the the biggest problem for me I face uh, uh, is a Muslim translation Muslim translation is full of lies and sometimes, I mean, the whole sentence disappear just because actually, if you go to Ibn Kathir, not only whole sentence, hundreds of pages are gone. Not only sentence. If you go to Ibn Kathir as an example, read about satanic verses, you will see Ibn Kathir translation, not Arabic. All the verses, all the statement where it says that Muhammad is said that the three daughters of Allah, their intercession is a must, is gone in English. They are not there. Disappear. You know, this is just one from one verse. So, our this, uh, the, this uh, as an example here, like as I, I will show you example, a hadith here in the front of us. Uh, <clears throat> when Muhammad he came and he found Aisha playing with her dolls, and Muhammad he said to her, "What is this?" She said, "Those are my daughters." In the English translation, we cannot find where it says "my daughters." And I change any Muslim to call me and say you're lying. He asked, what is this? She said, my dolls. Doesn't say that. Nowhere it says my dolls. It says banati. Banati mean my daughters. So why the Muslims, they change from my daughters to my dolls? For a very simple reason. It's very embarrassing. That obviously this girl she have a mindset of a child to the point she consider the dolls her daughters. Call it Banati. We go in English, it says my dolls. And my my daughters have nothing to do with my dolls. Yes, she is talking about her dolls, but she did not say my dolls. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. the problem always. When you try, but, but now it's a lot better than before. Like before, we don't have those websites. When I was doing uh, the work I do for many, many years, I mean, this is not uh, YouTube is something new for me, actually. Uh, 
compared to what I did through my life before we have nothing in English I have only Arabic and I'm teaching people who speak only English so imagine you have to translate everything for them from okay. Arabic to English not only a missing sentence here and there or correcting a meaning of a word now at least yes they are lying but we can show them that the prophet he is marrying a child yes well here they try to fix it supposedly and they say it's a doll but this is confirmed that Muhammad is a child molester a wife and she is playing with the dolls <clears throat> so they try to fix it but even after the fixing it's still bad uh, also this um one um, I know you are working on the week. I can't wait when you finish your uh, your Quran. And um, there's one thing that I read in your book, and uh, and I look at the uh, I forgot um um where I look at the Usma uh, Usma did doc inter interpretation on on that Quran so, about the so, 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 uh, so well on. Uh, say again, I don't understand. Say again, what? Um, there's a there's a question I have for you. Uh, when I look the interpretation like in your book, I think I should, I don't know what I should maybe next time I will look at it. In your book, you there's an interpretation about um Muhammad swear with the is it not with the private part? I don't know. And uh, but in the interpretation in uh, the Usma Didok uh, Quran is different, but your own I think it, when it, I look at your yeah, book, I will know what about, I'm uh, talking about. It, it woke up, it woke up, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see, you know, I, I show the interpretation there, like in Ibn Abbas, he says, Waqab, it's about the penis when it's hard. But in the, yeah. in, the, in, in, the, in, in the Muslim English, you cannot find that. And this is why it's very important, you know, for uh, for those who they are seeking knowledge to have people who they are like me. Not only they knew a lot, but they can read Arabic. Because me, myself, you see, my knowledge it's going to be very limited if I am just a person like you who is just reading what is in the screen in front of me. You know what I mean? It's just an English one because there is nowhere in English is going to say that. Okay. But in my book, you will see the reference. You know, if you go back to my book, you'll see the reference coming from their own interpretation, not my interpretation. Correct? It's not my interpretation. But the Muslim, they will never mention that and they will never show that. Aisha, she came to him and she want to have sex with him supposedly she's trying to start to play with his hair and then Muhammad he look at the moon and he says oh you know uh, so uh, and then you go to see what is that in the interpretation it says clearly that Muhammad is saying I seek refuge by Allah from the evil of the penis when it get hard <laughs> you know yeah and this is not my interpretation again anytime a Muslim he want to call me and uh, prove me wrong he's you know he can feel free no okay I mean I don't mind anyway my friend anything else yeah that's it. thank you very much all thank right you. take care my friend Bye -bye. and we are waiting for your Quran the uh, the, uh, the Quran interpretation uh, we all can't right. wait to receive it all right okay thank you very much thank you yeah, in my book, this is not my interpretation. This is the interpretation of the Muslims. And actually, me, me, first time I saw this interpretation, I was shocked. I mean, what in the world those people are thinking about? Penis? Allah saying to Muhammad, seek refuge by Allah from the penis when it gets hard? <laughs> Anyway, <clears throat> now I am sure there is Muslims they will say this is a lie. I challenge you to prove it. Okay, who wanna call me and let us say make a challenge? What do you say, guys? Who is the brave Muslim? He is willing to call me and challenge me right now and say, Christian Prince, you are a liar. I want you to show me where in our interpretation it says that. Islamic interpretation. Any Abdul? Mayday, Mayday. The challenge is open anytime. Today, tomorrow, next year, a thousand years from now. Hmm? Take your time.
can we get your book in Am Amharic translation I don't speak Amharic my friend we have a translation in the languages we know uh, there is someone said uh, he will translate the my book to Russian and never heard from them you know there's people they are hardworking they are working now finishing my books in Spanish and I'm very thankful for them actually uh, the session of Allah already is done in Spanish as a translation and now they are doing proofreading again and then after they finish I have to insert the Arabic text because I prefer always to add the Arabic to it which, which will make it more legitimate so people they can get the both source and uh, as I know there's somebody now or a group of people working translating my book into Indonesian language we have the book already in Malay language I hope soon I will be able to publish it and uh, there's somebody working soon in the Portuguese I mean God is good God is good you know? all of this by the help of the good ones you know actually I searched before for somebody who can translate to Chinese but I could not find somebody to do so uh, I when I went went to China you know the the bad things about China their English is really bad like I went there supposed to do a seminar but the one who himself he translate I hardly I can me myself understand him uh, same in Korea you know in Korea we went in a bus and we have a guide with us supposedly I have no idea what he was saying he's speaking English by the way but I have no idea what he was saying I have no idea you know the bus is stopped I understand that now we have to get out get out we get out anything else he says and supposedly this guy is a professional who speak English you know this is his job he's a <laughs> welcome to Korea <laughs> in China is almost the same so uh, you know I, I wish that one day we can find uh, people who can translate to those languages because those countries they need our translation badly too the Muslims they are trying to uh, uh, open mosque in uh, they already open mosque in Hong Kong and they, you know they, they are very sneaky they tried to do their best to fool people and those people they have no idea what Islam is about All right uh, we need to translate to all languages actually if you see my videos in Indonesian language you will you will be surprised about how many Indonesian are watching I mean those guys who they are doing the subtitle in English they are really doing an amazing job they copy my video they add subtitle and then like in a few in a week or two you have like 40 50 thousand 60 thousand Um, anyway God is good I mean look at this me by myself I'm I can say uh, humbly I'm no one I'm not rich I'm not a businessman I'm not powerful I'm not connected I am NOT whatever you want to add to the list but if you see how much help I get from people it's really amazing it's very beautiful I mean German translation, French translation, Spanish translation, Dutch. Uh, wonderful people. What I can say? I mean, sometimes I feel like I'm fighting alone, but in reality, still there is many good people. They are standing with me. There's people who like to watch only, but there is many people. They really uh, do their part, and I appreciate them big time. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you know always uh, always the Lord he sent people in front of me and they have a good heart uh, for some reason I don't know how it worked you see like there's people they contact me they say I want to translate your book I ignore them I don't know why you know I if I don't feel like as of the Lord saying to me this person say yes I don't do it 
and until now I have never been disappointed with any of them they are very wonderful people they spend hours uh, like the the person who did the Dutch book spend hours with me talking explaining uh, I mean it's a lot of work so God is good you know and all those who do the translation either the translation for my books or translation for my videos they are wonderful people and you know look everybody do what he's what he can some some people they send donation we appreciate them some people they download the video you are doing still doing uh, good work um I, I cannot really complain the only thing i can complain about is the cold outside <laughs> I want to move out of here. <laughs> I cannot take it no more. I hope my by the next year I will be able to move out of this Alaska. I mean, I'm. It's a freezing man. I, it's not even freezing. It is. I don't know what to say. Unbelievable global warming. Now I believe in a global warming. God is good, my friend, and I am very grateful for all, all every one of you male and female wonderful people I know a lot of people they hate me because of I, I, I do but I hate no one I get angry I, I shout sometimes because you know I mean you are repeating the fighting the same fight for eternity I mean years after years after years and still there's somebody will call you and I mean they, they lie openly so sometimes you lose your patient Sometimes even I lose my patience with Christians. Like there's many wonderful Christians. They say to me, "God bless you, Christian Prince, etc." We love you. I don't answer them because I cannot really answer everybody. I mean, if you open my Skype, it's scary. I have I don't know how many. If I show you, it's in the blue messages. I don't know from who. Some it is good. Some they are you know saying to me, "We love you," etc. Some they are saying, "We invited our house." It's wonderful people. And some saying, you know, we hate you etc Muslim so uh, in the same time I feel guilty like I cannot answer the person who a person is saying to you I would like to invite to my house I cannot answer him because if I open a conversation we have to talk and if I do that with everybody you can imagine I will spend my life just answering people actually I I close my sky my uh, my Facebook uh, email because it's became so much Making videos, working my books, answering emails. It's endless. And sometimes emails are you know are like um, silly, not, not even important. Uh, <clears throat> How Christians are treated in the Middle East depend which country. There are some countries, Christians. Muslims cannot mistreat them, like in Lebanon. Until now, the president in Lebanon is a Christian. The head of the army is a Christian. The head of the intelligence is a Christian. The head of what you call like FBI, CIA is a Christian. So until now in Lebanon, they are controlling a big deal of the country and they live in their own territory and they are very heavily armed, extremely heavily armed. In different countries like in Egypt, Christian there are badly mistreated even though they are maybe 20, 23 millions. Uh, the Muslims in Egypt, they ensure the humiliation of the Christians and they will never give them a chance to breathe. So it depends which country you are talking about. In Sudan, Sudan, the Christians, they were humiliated for centuries. Finally, uh, in the south of Sudan, they discover oil. And in overnight, overnight, I mean, amazing how what what oil can do. Overnight, Obama he went to United Nation, and he made United Nation agree to give South of Sudan their independent. But that not because they are Christians, but because they want American companies to control the oil there. I mean, the people they are fighting for their freedom for a long time. The day. You find that they have a lot of oil is the day we vote for their independence right so 
uh, Christians are mistreated everywhere unless you don't allow it unless you yourself you don't allow it if you remember what happened in Indonesia in the what is called the east of Timor who remember the east of Timor in the east of Timor where people they are converting to Christianity by tens of thousands the Muslims they could not take it no more they decide to attack the east of Timor now those Christians are poor people not like the Muslims who get support from Qatar from Bahrain from Emirat from Saudi Arabia just say when I go in a war everybody support you Christian nobody support them but thanks to God when that war happened against the Christians and this the slaughter started at that time there was a good conservative Christian minister in Australia who decided to protect them and he took a stand to defend them and because of his help actually they got their independent you know God is good my friend and you know let me tell you something about being mistreated being mistreated as a Christian will make a few better Christian it's like filtering machine you know if you are a weak Christian you will leave Christianity because you cannot handle being mistreated because you don't you don't have a string strong belief it's the same as what happened to the Apostles in the time of Jesus and after that the one who don't have a good belief he will be filter like Judah he sold out Jesus in the time of Jesus and the one who they are strong they never change their belief even if you feed them to the animals they used to to play with them I mean they throw you as a Christian for a lion or for a tiger or you know it's just for fun Christians was like an entertainment for the Roman for a long time and yet they don't change their faith or what they want to say to them okay say we don't believe in Jesus and you you will let you go they say no uh, even the Quran by the way confirmed that the Christians are solidly in their belief uh, the Quran as an example uh, mention a story of a guy his name is Dhun Maybe we don't talk about that much. But according to the story, you can find it in chapter 85. This chapter is speaking about Christians being burned alive. They are what? They are burned alive and they refuse to deny the Messiah even the Quran witness that the Christians are willing to be burned alive but they will not deny the Lord so if a Muslim will say it's not true then he have to go against his Quran And the pagan and the Jews become target of Christians after Christianity become a religion of the Roman Empire. That's not true. That's false. You see, just to show you, Abbas, that you are a donkey like your prophet, the answer to you is from the Quran. Shall I answer him from the Quran, this Abbas, to show you he's a donkey? I mean, this guy, he insulted his prophet without knowing, because he's a donkey. In the Quran, there's a chapter, it's called the chapter of the Roman. When the Roman were defeated by the Persian, Muhammad was sad. And he received a message from Allah that the Roman, they will be victorious in a few years. And then the believers will rejoice. Do you see it? And this is during the time of Muhammad. So how you donkey saying that the Roman they became an empire and now they are kidding as you said and yet your God Allah he's saying he will be rejoiced when the Roman they are victorious victorious for what for killing the Jews are you there donkey Abbas 
guys do you understand why I say I call I say those names donkey I mean this guy he just get himself busted the believers will rejoice because the Roman will be victorious if you go behind the story at that time Muhammad he claimed to be Christian like the Christians so they said to him, "Oh, look, the Christians, your people, they 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 are defeated. Why their God did not help them?" Muhammad he got upset. He went home and he fabricated this chapter, saying, "Okay, well, the Christians they are defeated, but in a few years they will be victorious." But at that time, the Roman they were fighting two parties, as Abbas he said. The Jews and the Persian. Why the Jews? The Jews in 614 they help the Persian to attack Jerusalem. So when the Roman they took over Jerusalem, all the Jews they flee. Because they knew what will happen, for they betray the Christians. So Abbas is a certified donkey trying to put down the Roman when his God he rejoiced for the victory of the Roman. So don't be upset, Abbas, when I say you are a certified donkey. Also, it is it is okay to kill the Jews in the sixth centuries now for you? Guys, do you see do you see the hypocrisy? I was talking about the first uh, and fifth century. You are right. So it's okay to kill the Jews in the sixth centuries. It's not okay to not to kill the Jews before that. Abbas, you are just a child and you have no dignity. Literally, you have no dignity. Yeah, I run away from you for sure. And you know what? Uh, uh, just to show you how much I'm running away from you, don't ever even pause something in my text. You are a certified donkey. And you are an insult to your prophet. Get lost. After all the barbecue we did to this donkey, he still he says, You are running away from me. <laughs> True story. You just you just insulted your prophet, saying that the Christians they are criminals, they were attacking the pagan and the Jews. And you just said that this is was okay in the fourth and the fifth century. Oh, sorry, you are saying you are talking about the fourth and the fifth century, as if it doesn't matter. Does it matter if it's a fourth century or fifth century or sixth century? Coward. And the Christian, they did not go after the Jews because they are Jews, but because they betrayed them and they helped the Persian to enter Jerusalem. The same what happened in Spain. In Spain, the Jews, they betrayed the Christians again. And they helped the Muslims to occupy Spain. So when the Spanish, they took back the land, all the Jews, they ran away. They ran away with their uh, friends, the Muslims. They are doing business. The same exactly they did with the Persian. And I'm not here speaking about the Jews against the Jews. I'm speaking history. This is history. This is not about a person. And today, we as a Christian still, we support Israel to be a state of the Jews. And we believe strongly Israel, in a few years from now, maybe 50, maybe 100, is going to turn to be Christian, Masonic Christian country. You like it, you don't. Christianity is number one. This is why there's many Jews are very angry from Christians because the Jews always they lose to side the Christianity. Let us make it in a different way. Christianity is sucking the gro the growth of the population of the Jews. And this is why the Jews is still a very small number because even in Israel, the biggest conversion is converting to Christianity. You might find uh, uh, one Jew or two convert to Islam, very rare. But you will find tens of the churches, it's called Masonic Jews, which means they are Jews, Christians. Right?
uh, and here by the way you will see uh, uh, in this verse in the front of us the chapter of the Roman Muhammad here he made a false uh, prophecy because in Arabic it says which means between three to nine and the victory was not really complete until many many years after the Roman they were fighting with the Persian for more than 300 years and here again you will see a stupidity of Islam how the Christians after that they became the enemy of Muhammad and how here he rejoiced for the victory of the Christians stupid how in the chapter of the elephant Allah he sent a bird to destroy an army of a Christians which is coming to destroy the pagan Kaaba according to the story which is there's no proof of it because first of all how an army of elephant can come in the desert that is the most fiction stupid story ever every elephant you need about 600 gallons of water a day at least if not for drinking is even to cool himself elephant do not have a cooling system they have to jump in the water during the daytime or to stay in the shade otherwise they will be melted rain and humidity is very important for elephants Saudi Arabia does not have any elephant coming all the way from Ethiopia to the Mecca that is the most stupid statement ever but then you will see the story saying that Allah he sent birds to destroy this army now why Allah he will send an army of birds to destroy a Christian army but yet he is rejoicing here for a victory of a Christian army same time why Allah he sent an army of birds in the chapter of the elephant to fight against this Christian army as is claimed but yet Allah he did not send his birds to fight against Al Qurmuti who he came or Al Hajjaj Al Qurmuti who he came and he destroyed the Kaaba and he took the black stone for more than 21 years at least according to Muslims and then when he returned it he returned it pieces actually he returned like three three tiny rocks very small eight eight of them why Allah did not send the birds and not only that Al Qurmuti he stand he stood in in the Kaaba in the top of the Kaaba while they are destroying it and he was screaming to Allah saying to him hey Allah where is your birds hello where is your birds and because of that incident at that time Christian you know like Christianity start taking over of the Arabian Peninsula and Islam was shrinking because people did notice that this Kaaba is a lie and there's no God for this Kaaba the grandfather of Muhammad he says for this Kaaba have a Lord to protect it but yet the Muslims in Saudi Arabia they are buying f-16 a wax Rafal, Mig, and now they are trying to purchase from the Russian S400. If you have the birds to protect it, why you want why you want those? Hmm? Do we have any Muslim want to say something? All right. Well, I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And I hope I will be able to go on air maybe tonight again. I don't know if I can do it. Uh, I will. If not, maybe tomorrow. God is willing. And I hope we are learning and we are educating ourselves. And if you are insulted by what we say, I don't care. I say it as it is. I am not a sugar-coating Christian kind. I say things as it is. And I use it with the, let us say, the limited English I have. People like it, don't like it. Honestly, I don't care. For when you say the truth, people get offended. I never saw a person saying something truthful, and he did not offend somebody. Or many, mostly many, they will be offended. But this is your choice to be offended or not. I'm just sharing the truth. So I want to say thank you for being here. And until we see you again, we say may the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord and Islam is false.
let me do that and please don't forget to download the videos and share them because we don't keep them here for long few hours a day maximum thank you